recording. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting. Tonight is Thursday, May 25th, 2023. The time is now 7.08 p.m. Call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Recorded. <laughs> Gotta add that on the As always, the meetings are being recorded for both audio and video. We ask that you please silence your cell phone or put it on vibrate so as to not disturb the flow of the meeting. Uh, masks and hand sanitizer are still available at the front of the room for anyone interested. Uh, before we move into the main items onto the agenda, we're going to go through the, the approval of the minutes. The first is for the minutes of April 22nd, 2023, the workshop meeting. Um, as far as I know, we don't have to do anything that no, because we didn't have a meeting. Okay. 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 Um, the April 27th, 2023, Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> And then the next one is the approval of the minutes for the May 23rd, 2023 special meeting with the EP. A motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, treasurer's report. Irene, if you have anything that you'd like to um, go over. No, nothing unusual. Um, I guess uh, maybe a strange kind of a request. Um, we get points on our credit card that we're using. It's not that much. If you guys are okay with it, I'd rather apply to the points to uh, pay on to the bill itself. Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay, so yeah. I'll start keeping track of that. Um, I think that program has gone well for everything. It makes a lot of transactions a lot easier. Um, other than that, I had a housekeeping question for Colin with respect to our escrow accounts. So that's just something we have to hash out with um, how to best uh, let our... Um, people that have escrow accounts, how to replenish their funds. So just something, uh, we didn't realize that there's a transaction fee that's coming out every month mm -hmm. because we weren't getting the statements. We got a whole bunch of bulk statements and it's this realization like, oh, there's a transaction fee that's monthly. Yeah, there's, completed. I still think there's gotta be a way that we don't have a transaction fee for something like an escrow account. Otherwise it's just gonna bleed itself slowly. But at the same time, the bank is is maintaining and monitoring these accounts. So. I, but at the same yeah. time, they have a bank that's mm -hmm. able to draw against. Right, right. So, so I mean, I'll, I'll I'll speak to Nicole, see if there's anything else we can do. Um, but if, you know, there's just a fee for everything. Yeah, it's free. Well, so I know I think we probably covered yeah. this before, but is there any way that we would be able to to ledger them so that they're in the same account but managed under the same like checking account number per se? Like, are we allowed to code of account them in any capacity? They, they are coded of account. Well, I, I mean, yeah, like yeah. within within one account. Like, yeah. No, I, I find it much easier for accounts. Well, uh, agreed. Agree. Right. But if it's the difference of like 10 bucks a month per escrow account versus. Right, yeah. but, but what yeah. happens when, how do I keep track of, so let's say yeah, one person needs right. something and the funds are pulled out of that particular. Well, it would just be the same way we do the, the budget lines. Like you have the like highway maintenance. There's twenty thousand out of the the two hundred thousand dollar pool of annual money. I'm not so sure the bank will do that, um, because it's all separate agreements. So they're treating it as each individual account. Well, what I'm saying is maybe yeah. we sidestep the bank. This might be a question for Colin. Are we allowed to have uh? instead of the, the full on account for an escrow account that it's in as a, a code of account under our like general fund. So most municipalities have a single account for holding tank escrows, another account for stormwater escrows, mm -hmm. and they just keep a ledger related to each person's funds in that account to avoid these types of fees being imposed. Yeah. But, so rather than having an individual account, it would be one account, much like our general fund. And then we'd have a code of account for like Peter McCarthy's agreement, right, Jim right. Brooks's agreement, Irene right. Seleski's agreement. So it's it's back to the drawing board with the bank and ask them to essentially rewrite the holding a tank. Like we would just ask them it, to, it, it's, to, it's, it's it's clerical is, is, yeah. is what it is. Yeah. I have no problems keeping track of everything in the system. That's already been done. Yeah. So it's just going back to the bank saying, hey, can you, can we have this in one account so that the fees are minimal? 
Yeah, because I, I, I'd much rather us if it's let's again just throw in a number out there. Right. If it's ten bucks a month right. for, like for this, US. pay that one time rather right. than six times, seven times, right. eight times, a hundred times. Right, and and so so the question is, you know, if it, I'll have to ask Nicole if we can, or Nicole or Kim, if we could do that with respect to the answer. It's a one single fund. Yeah. Um, but I think they were sending, we didn't receive the statements up until a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so they were letting the owners of the account know what the balance is as well. So at, at that point, people can just, oh, like, I hate to say, yeah. like, have them call Sue because Sue is super busy. But if somebody actually wants to know the balance of their escrow account, that should right. just be called into the office. Right. And then right. you'll even know if the treasurer looks it up. We send you an email, we give you a call back, whatever. Right. I'll, call, I'll I'll talk to yeah, Nicole see if we could. Yeah, if you, if you need of, my help, I can I can peel away. And like just keep, get the minimum balance. Keeping track of it is no problem. I just don't. Well, I meant like going and talking to the bank. If you need me to run, it's, it's just that. that. It's just that I, I I'm not too sure yes. with the way we have the agreement structured that they're going to say okay we'll combine this into one fund. So that's my only concern with that. But well, I can ask. Well, I mean, if nothing yeah. else, if if they can't consolidate, Wait. we just simply close the escrow accounts, open another one, and. Right, and then Shuffle what happens things with around. the agreements that we have on the Well, the agreements shouldn't be account specific. The agreements are with the township, not with a, a okay. specific checking account. Okay, so then I'll talk to Nicole, ask her to combine it. We'll call the holding yeah. tank escrow account, yeah. and that's fine. And then I can, I it doesn't right. affect the way I keep track of anything in the, in the account. Is there right. any because banks don't charge fees? No. no. Are you kidding? I don't pay like, fees. Well, uh, first on a personal level, there's a lot right. of accounts that don't. But once you get right. into like governmental and commercial, my business account, uh, I don't pay right. fees. That that may be a very well kept secret then for you, Jim. Right. Don't, okay. don't don't ask them to change yeah. anything. And we have a similar issue with the township accounts, and once we kind of hash things out, we don't get charged those fees, but we also are not receiving certain paperwork. But the paperwork that we previously were receiving is available as an online statement. And because we have access online, I'm able to print those up, file them, et cetera. So um, I'll, I'll talk to Nicole, see what else we could do with that and uh, see how else I can manage it. I'm just I'm just wondering from an auditor's perspective, but um, and so then any fees will get split by the amount of account holders yeah. and uh, just moving on from there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, depending on yeah. what it is, it might be worthwhile to just figure out how that splits out. And then right, you just right. ledger it per per thing. So if it looks like so yeah. it's ten bucks and we have ten accounts, it's a dollar for each one of them. Right. So so it, right, like I said, it's 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 not from from my end of it. That's not the problem. Yeah. I just want to make sure the bank can do what we're asking them to do, and it's not going to require anything further. Um, I think we did at a meeting we motioned for Jim to be able to sign on accounts, so I have to get a copy of those minutes so that can be done as well, so we don't have to tie you up all the time. Then. Yeah, and hey, this is what it is. What it is. Okay. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can you come up to the microphone, please, because you can't hear right. the yeah. Uh, Dan, can you, can you come up to yeah. the microphone and when you do, can you turn that microphone on for me? Yeah. Dan. All right. Thank you, Joe. My okay. name is Dan Klein. I live at 14 Rose, which court in Stonecrop Village. I noticed on the treasurer's report that there are six undeposited funds. Oh, that's easy. That's, okay. that's me, isn't it? No, no, no. There's an asterisk there, but no explanation yeah. Yeah. for the so, asterisk. So, so let me explain. So what happens is those are typically engineering books. That was set up with the accountant that helped us to reconcile our books. So what happens is... Um, we pay the engineer. Um, there's certain items that we could bill for. And so the account that it gets sent to when the people reimburse us is that particular account. It says the 12,000 number. So all that is is reimbursement back for any, any engineering or legal costs with the project that those homeowners have participated in. So kind of reimbursement back to Mary. Back to Damn the township. Yeah. 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 Super. So I apologize. Um, uh, that's the way Rick had set that up for us, and uh, it works. I'm not messing with it, and I apologize. It causes some confusion. So, yeah. Yeah. I could always. Do we, do we maybe just label it like reimbursed fees or something? I can read. Re well, I mean, I'm just, yeah. just throwing that out yeah. there because yeah. might, might I, take I, away I, some of the ambiguity. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. <clears throat> so, no. Okay. Uh, did somebody else have a question? No. 
Okay. Thank okay. you. Uh, anything else you wanted to nah, bring up nah. report? That was it. Awesome. Okay. Um, that, in that case, I'll make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for May 2023. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comment. Anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the microphone, just like Dan did a few moments ago. Please be sure to clearly state your name and address for the record and sign in on the sign-in sheet if you have not done so already. Um, Sue, for your records, we have one person on the Zoom. It's Thomas Falk. Okay. Good evening. I've got bad news and good news. The bad Just news your is... Name and address, please. Certainly. James Donadini, 198 Sweet Birch Lane and Walmart Store. I also happen to be although very lame duck, for the final week, the president of the HOA at Stonecroft Village. Uh, and my comments will be pedantic. I don't know any way to avoid that, other than to tell you that uh, um, for the members of the HOA, I get the ability to speak for them in this final instance. And there's only one of the distinguished members of the board that was up for election this time around. And I will share with you to a person at the HOA, that, that we are so pleased that you were willing to run, Peter, and that you were successful. Thank you. Um, the next item I have for you is not old news, it's kind of new news. There's an agency, R.J. Fisher Associates. Anybody familiar with that group of people or the engineers? Well, good, because I kind of thought it was. They are an aerial engineering survey group that has been aerially surveying our property at Stonecraft um, and doing it to code. I'm a pilot and uh, a commercial pilot, a drone recreational pilot, and they were doing that to standard. So that's good news. The bad news is, is it, it, since you were aware of that, it, why would they be doing that, Mr. Engineer? How did you get wind that they were surveying your property? Uh, well, when I said when I said they were doing it to standard, how would they? I mean, if they were doing it to standard, they could get permission. But if it's an aerial, if it's an aerial flight. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you talking about a drone or an airplane? I'm talking about a drone that flies over the property. Yeah. Okay. Um, could it have been for the property adjacent to the stone drop there? Sir. Surveying uh, okay. and over the street. I stopped and talked to him. Okay. I know he was preaching me there. I spoke with him and I had a business. Okay. So could they Why have been they surveying the, the development for the purposes of generating as built drawings for oh. final close out of the project? Chuck, I think the, the bigger issue is there's rules around when you fly a drone over habitated space. Yeah. Especially when it's yeah. in a commercial context. Yeah. And, and I believe that they were following to standard. I mentioned that. Yeah. That I, I can show you on my my iPad prologue that they registered the time and the space that they were going to be there. And that's the biggest. Okay. So they, they did it in accordance with. So as much as I know, yes. Yeah. Okay. Can't answer that. You, you, it wasn't you, us. You talked to the gentleman. Didn't he? Did you ask him that question? I did. But he wouldn't disclose what? He should say, sir, survey the property. Okay. I asked the gentleman who was paying the bill. He told me landmark was paying the bill. Okay. So it's a developer getting as built survey information, I would assume. No, I asked you if you knew and you said you did. That's why. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm aware of the firm. <laughs> I'm aware of the company, but I, I don't know their day to day operations or why they were at Stonecrop Village. I can't answer that. Okay. So. You as the engineer did not request them to be there. No, not at all. Of course not. The township request them to be there. Yeah. No, no. Nothing yeah. came from us. The, the, the agreement, our improvements agreement with the developer requires as built drawings. Right. To, to the extent they were flying a drone for that pur purpose, it would be to comply with those agreements. Yes. They're working towards closing out the development project with the township. Good. That that, that, that that it was my thought. It was probably that issue. And I want to then address the following issues. With it. We have uh, a number of critters uh, that are lying dead on our ponds now. I had asked 
that the board consider asking that that water be tested. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. We, have in the we also have. Why, why would the township have that water tested? Why wouldn't you have the water tested as the homeowner? I, I asked the township if they would test it, and they said, we'll ask Landmark to do it. Is the last meeting. I think if you were to look at the yeah, we don't have a I don't own the pond. I was, I was so you don't own the pond this. yet. Okay, right. That was the one area that they did not dedicate to the HOA at this time. One of the, yes. Yeah, I think yes. there were two areas that they did not. Okay. Okay. Um, we also have, before closeout, we have muskrats now that have uh, invested in residents in that pond. I, I will share with you what I've shared before that 1142, National Fire Code 1142, has great application. In an, in an agricultural community, it has great state and purpose. In a residential 214 home, uh, 55 plus community, it, it has very practical implications and problems. Um, one is that it's a natural gas community. And I would ask, is anybody, the fire chief here, anybody aware of where the, fire, where the gas cutoffs are in that development? Yeah, that's, that's, yep, that's UGI's territory or whoever the gas service provider is would, you know, control the valving for the system coming into the development. But uh, don't they have to be marked? But well, they're typically at the surface of the pavement um, and paved and marked. Well, there's the pavement around them, but the valves are there, they're very similar to a water valve. Okay, I mean, it, it would be, it, there are a number of cumbersome things to, to suppressing a fire with that code and with those conditions. Um, gas might be the least of them, let's hope it is. Um, but I don't know of any markings on, on the natural gas lines, and maybe they are. I'm just asking if anybody else does. The fire department does not, okay. Um, it's one are, are you saying the code things. requires yeah. the gas yeah. shutoff valves be marked? I think they're supposed to be painted a color. Yes, I think it? they're supposed to be yellow. Yeah, typically they're yeah, they are yellow if, if a PA one call is done to identify the valves, but I don't know that they have to be maintained in in a color or other designation. I, I, I'm not interested in, in in getting in a debate with you on it. I'm just I have shared before, and I want to share one final time that I think 1142 was not the right plan, and it's human errors is available to anybody and it was in this instance. It's not the right code to apply to that development. And, and there was at the point at that point, now I know we're in tri-county zoning and I don't think it applies any longer, but the development code that, that existed said that it should be wet piping um, and 500 feet apart. Um, and that would be the correct coding for that kind of a development. Realize that was all done a number of years ago with the preliminary plan on how that was, you know, how that fire service was to be provided in that community because there wasn't public water does, available. Correct? Does the township even have a fire code adopted? <clears throat> I'd have to look at the top of my head. I don't know. By ordinance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't have a fire code. So any provision that you're citing in the IFC would not be applicable. What's that? The township has not adopted an international fire code. So to the extent you're referencing a provision of the fire code, we have not adopted it. So it would not apply. No. They, they, we, they approve the plans for the development to, that is doing a suppression system that's 1142. Yeah. They don't have to adopt it to do that. They did it. 1142 of what? Of the national fire code. Okay. Again, okay. we're, we're going back in history that, unfortunately, I don't think we have, you know, ex direct experience with how that development was approved you know, as part of the preliminary subdivision of land development plan, how fire service was to be addressed there. Potential, potentially through the building code. <clears throat> yeah, and at that time, building code wouldn't, I mean, if you don't have public water in the area, you can't have wet hydrants. So they put in basically dry hydrants that, are, that can draw off of the pond water. Um, 
I'd have to I'd have to go back and see if there was, you know, a conditional use or something that was processed for that development that might have had additional criteria for a fire suppression system of some sort. I don't I don't know. The plan was a flawed plan, and in the years, the subsequent years that have evolved since then, it was painfully apparent that it was a flawed plan. Well, I, I don't I don't know if it was a flawed plan. But obviously, it was approved and recorded, and lots and homes were built there. So, I don't know what 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 are you what are you looking to accomplish at this point in time regarding fire service protection. I, I walk I walk off the stage, and I won't be back here as the president again. I just want to state it one more time oh, that okay. we have a problem. We have a problem, um, and uh, I think I don't think there was any sinister value in it. Or, or in criminal intent, but there was an error. And the error has been repeated a number of times. What, 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 what error exactly? Huh? Uh, what, what, what error? I think he's he's saying that the, the code that was applied, and stop me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I'm gonna try and translate here for a second. Uh, 1142 is not the right provision for what that community is. That okay. the way that was cited was dry hydrants, mm -hmm. whereas for the, the kind of population density and type of community that it is, it should have been a, a different section of the fire code that called for wet hydrants. Is and that right, Jim? Pursuant to That's correct. Okay. And, and, the, and, and your code, and, yeah. your, your development code, I mean, at the time. Well, right, it would be whatever was in effect at the time that was approved, but yes. I, I'm not aware of any reference to the National Fire Code in any of the township's ordinances, especially subdivision and land development. I, I couldn't I could be mistaken, but I don't know. I started out by saying 1142 has good place in, in, in practice in an agricultural community. My neighbor, Walter, doesn't need to have a, a, a fire hydrant built to, to go into his Okay, but okay, well, we, we, can't, we can't apply that provision to a development no, that's already been approved. Hold on. I think he, he's just, you're illustrating a point that it, that it does. 1142 is not an error. The code is not an error. Right. Applying it in this standard in a, in a development, when you have a code, a township code that said, nah, no go. What, what code are you referencing, though? Because uh, there's, there's uncertainty if there is even an adopted fire code for Marion Township. At that point in time, <clears throat> the development code. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I, I think now you're in the process of rezoning, right? We actually rezoned a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the zoning Sorry. ordinance does not cover the fire code. I, I, I'm questioning what, what ordinance you're saying that the fire code is referenced as a requirement for that development. Can we, can you, can you just check the, like the, the original development plan to see what it references there in terms of fire security? I think that might be the most direct thing. Yeah, if, if there were notes or something on there, but I, I don't, you know, it would take research and somewhat of the township files to see if there was some other identification of a code or, or, or you know, consideration of alteration of that code or what have you. But I, I do know that, you know, because there was not public water there, there was concern about providing some means for fire fighting capability. And I, but I don't know how, if, it was required, or if there was a request to deviate from any given national standard? I don't think it would take a great deal of research to, to um, prove what I'm saying to you. I'm, I'm just offering it up as an error. Um, and the problem with it is, it, it, like I say, it's a 55 plus community that has houses built 20 feet apart. Mm -hmm. When they're built to code exactly, um, and it's, it makes a venturi. Anybody familiar with what a venturi is? Mm -hmm. When you get the kind of wind that we get there, um, there are three ingredients for a fire. You need fuel, you need a spark, and you need oxygen. And the, it, it provides all of those in horrible conditions. And nobody knows how to shut off the gas. And you say, well, the, the requirement is you got a fire, you call a gas company. You know, bad news, bad news for 214. What, what, what are you requesting that the township do? Well, I, mean, I, I kind of want to reach out to Wolmelsdorf Fire because I think Wolmelsdorf typically responds to Stonecroft, if I'm not mistaken, and see if they know where the, the gas but, but, shutoffs are. But again, but is what, what is the Homeowners Association yeah. requesting that the township do? Because the township cannot apply yeah. a new... 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're pointing these things out. Okay, and I and 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 I just want to make you aware that the law says we cannot apply a code that we would adopt today to a plan that's already been approved. Okay, that's that's the law. Okay. It sounds like they adopted the national code at the time. We don't have well, they, they, might so have, they adopted the national yeah, they might have they might have cited it, but the, the question is if there's no if there was no adopted fire code in the township at the time. Like you could you could cite right. things from like building code. Right. 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 So if it's yeah. not on the law, yeah, it's like here in Marion and it's legally it's, enforceable. It would be it's, like it's a point. Point. the first the first time I presented this to you, I, I illustrated coconut growth. Anybody familiar with coconut? In, in Miami? No. Uh, we, anybody know where I'm from? I grew up in Boston. Coconut Grove was a, was a nightclub in Boston oh. Oh. Oh, that okay. had code standing. The fire chief said it was okay. And they had the doors locked when there was a fire. And the owner of that club was released from prison one week before he died from cancer when the finding was filed on. And that's... That's a horrible thing, but I'm more concerned with the 214 homes that I have there that we don't have a practical system to suppress fires. And, and, and here's where the elements of the problem were. In my 11 years with speaking with you on the board, I illustrated several times that the plan was interrupted. There are supposed to be two hydrants, dry hydrants, on Copper Beach on the, on the road that the fire trucks could hook up to very easily. Well, it was found very early on that they didn't work because of their angle on the pond or whatever the condition was. So not going back to the development, not going back to the plan, the developer took those out, removed one of the two of them, put one next to the pond that was never able to be certified by 1142. <clears throat> That's, that's if, the series of things that if, have happened. But if, if there was hydrants shown on the recorded plan, yes. they have to be there before they're going to close out that project in Marion Township. Yeah. Well, to, I mean, to, what, to what end and what value? Well, whatever the bond money was for that component of it, they like, I'm not going to sign off on a release on that until it matches up. Plan right. Or whatever they, the they have to construct all the improvements that were shown on the, on the approved plan. And if not, then the financial security for the development will not be released. Okay. Well, but good. Unless they can document somehow that the, a deviation from the approved plan was approved by the township to allow it to be removed. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we haven't done anything. Right. Yeah. Well, in the past six years, there hasn't been anything like that. So. There's a lot of things here. Does that include the clubhouse not being a Well, well we, I, we're, getting, we're getting to get there, too. I said this would be pedantic. And I apologize. It's my last crack at um, it. Part of, part of this whole thing is a failure to communicate. And, and there's no obligation to, I mean, they, they communicate to me to the point that they sell me a house. After that, HOA or no HOA, they don't have to communicate with me, but I would think they have to communicate with you. Not necessarily in a certain mm -hmm. thing. On an adjustment to a certain thing. Yeah, on an adjustment to a plan, absolutely. That yes, has to be definitely there. Yeah. But day to day activities or anything like that nature, no. Okay. Let, let's, let's move on. And I apologize for being for that. I warned about it. We have 25 light poles now um, mm -hmm. on a plan that said produce 27, 28 poles, and I can't remember. Fred, do you know the exact number? 27, 28. Again, if there are, I'm hearing there's 29 light poles that were shown on the approved plan. Those 29 light poles aren't there. Then there's going to be an issue with releasing the financial security for the for the development. Okay, so at this point they're leased. It the plan we have this and you don't care. The you word don't... was furnished. They had to all that it, the, the, it said because this is the again it was it was a matter of language that was used on the under the contract and the contract said furnished. 
It didn't say own. It didn't say lease. It's simply yeah, said it just has to have lights and that are functional. Is a broad interpretation. Yeah. And and then whoever is responsible for the payment of the electricity and the maintenance of those lights, that that's if it's if they're being leased, then that's for the lease agreement. Um, all I can say is if they were required to have 29 street lights there and they're not there, if there's some missing, that's going to be flagged that landmark needs to uh, address. Okay. But they didn't supply 29 light poles. 29 light poles were put in and they were leased. The but, they're yeah. but they're, they're there. But they're there. They're there. To provide. They were furnished. They were furnished. But Landmark engaged the, the utility company to put the poles in. But the bill yeah, goes so hold, to the HLA. Yeah, hold on, well, hold on. Who would the bill go to otherwise? Yes. Right. Before we go down the rabbit hole too far, I think that the, the stipulating factor here is there's there's an agreement. There's there's some premise here between the HOA and Landmark. Right. From a township standpoint, the plan, whether the, the wording is furnished or leased or provided, from a township standpoint, what the plan stipulates is that there has to be those those lights present. If there was a, a, I'll say a little bit of a shoving match that had to happen between parties here, it's unfortunately a civil matter. It's between the HOA and Landmark on the, the true meaning of the word furnished. Um, as much as we'd like to lean on that, our, our hands are, are kind of tied because if they say to, in order to release this bond money, we have to put in 29 lights and they put in 29 lights, then that's all she wrote. Prior to their departure and then the execution of the survey final plan from the HOA, I asked Landmark if they had a home inspector that they would like us to use to inspect the clubhouse prior to their departure. And they never communicated the name. So I said, well, I'm going to proceed with a home inspection. And we did. And it had a number of sightings, but um, the last communication with Landmark with us, and again, I don't think they have any obligation to communicate with us, but the last was late October, early November around streets completion. Um, so we haven't had heard anything on the success or the failure of that clubhouse's completion. And as Jim pointed out, it's horribly undersized. It was on the plans, clearly on the plans, stated to be 2,700 square feet, and it's not half that. <clears throat> um, the problem for that is that now the development is built out. There are 214 homes, and we have had to, I mean, even before COVID, we had to curtail function of that clubhouse um, being responsible for it. So, Jim, or not Jim, excuse me, uh, Chuck, can you check what's on the approved plan for clubhouse size? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, certainly. I mean, that should be a pretty black and white but, thing. Like if you say, if the plan says 2,700 square feet and it's 1,300, then... I, I don't think the financial security was established. For the no, there isn't for the club. Yeah, that, that's, that's an that. amenity that was provided but, by the developer. If nothing else, we could confirm that. But I hate to, I hate to be yeah. in the same ground here, but then you have recourse in, in a civil sense. I'm, I'm not yeah, an attorney, that, so I'm not giving advice here, but if you have a black and white plan says this, this is what they provided, that's 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 pretty specific. We a little bit smugly refer to the second pond that was done because of the conservation's requirement, DEP's requirement on the development that they remove trees and and, and hit the central area of our development to accomplish percolation on the property. Well, full project. But you're, percolation. Was you're, one. you're talking about Lake Will Be Gone, right? Yes. We, we affectionately yeah. call it Lake Will Be Gone. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I guess I was just so you understand. I think what I, my understanding is that they had an NPDS permit for the earthwork there, and it either expired or they had to renew it. And when they did so, there were new regulations that they had to address. And yes, it's very unfortunate that they didn't communicate with the HOA what those modifications may have been as a result of getting that uh, NPDS permit for, for the development site. Um, because ultimately, you know, whoever owns that property is subject to those permit requirements and the facilities that are there. Because as they close out that NPDS permit, it gets the plans get recorded, um, 
and there's other uh, documents that are recorded that run with the property then, that DEP could come back and basically enforce to whoever owns it at that time. Um, and I've seen this before where developers do that and they don't communicate with the residents in a community um, even when there's not an HOA, they don't communicate, you know. So the communication thing is unfortunate and I don't, I don't know how to, you know, I don't think the township has any recourse to require the developer to communicate with the residents or with the uh, leadership of the HOA. Okay. Well, I think there's one of the things that we're basically saying is that we have a number of issues with crazy planning work that are simple in, in respect. Like we, we want an AutoCAD set of the drawings mm -hmm. so that we have to modify something. We can do that. They have projected that out. There's a number well, of. Well, that, that information, that data is copyright protected, so it's not something that they can easily hand over. And it's not even landmarks. It could be the engineer who ever prepared those. Well, I've spoken with the engineer. They have no problem with it. And it's our facility and property that we have paid. So would the engineer release them to you then directly? He is controlled by the landmark. So because landmark says they pay the board. You're right. And what we're saying is we're expecting the board of the township before you last end one to close out this thing to make sure they they fulfill some requirements of, for example, we would like a handbook for the clubhouse. Every one of our houses, the residents got a handbook that says here's the heating system, here's this, here's that, here's this. We'd like that for the clubhouse, we'd like that for the pond, there's a fountain there, there's a well. There's a word control system. Mm -hmm. Why is this the township? But there's, yeah. there's a whole mm -hmm. list of litany of things. But the township know. doesn't have the ability to go in and enforce those type, asking for those things or requiring those things from the developer. Why not? You're approving their development plan. But these aren't things that were accounted for right. in, in a typical development project like that. I mean, it's really just the improvements are built, not operation manuals, not you know, all kind of other uh, tangential things that I agree it would be beneficial for you to have, and I don't understand why they wouldn't provide it, but I, there's nothing I'm aware of that, that the township can mandate that they provide these things that well, was, were never accounted for. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> right. And, and, the township can't can't mandate that on the on behalf of the HOA. Somewhere around the five year mark of of my run with the board, Landmark came in here and said, "Yeah, we got to we got to check the liner to that lake and that pond. It's the fire suppression system, but we're going to do that once. We're going to do it before we leave here. Okay. Well, check that system to me is make sure that the pump." can actually fill that thing. Right now, it's pretty low. I hope we don't have a fire tonight. Um, but prior to the release of their bond money from this point forward, I would think it would be in not only in your right, but, but your obligation to ensure that the project is completed to what they promised you, not me. Yeah. I mean, and all we have in the promise to the township is what's on those recorded plans or within the developer's agreement. I think you have minutes of meetings that, where they said... Point one time we're going to do. Well, I mean, even if they said something in a publicly recorded meeting, that that doesn't supersede a, a recorded plan. So the only thing I could say is, and I, I believe me, I get the frustration. I, I truly do. Um, we will look out for the, the residents of Stonecrop much the same way we'd look for any of the residents in Marion Township, to the fullest extent of what we are able to to enforce. We will absolutely do that. So if the plan says that there has to be two two working uh, wet hydrants or dry hydrants, excuse me, at a certain place, and they have to be able to produce a certain volume of water, then you you better believe that that's what we are going to hold them to. That they're not going to get a, a penny out of it unless it does. But in the case of like the the handbook, unfortunately, they don't file any of that stuff with us. I'd, curiosity's sake, it would be kind of nice, but I know they didn't give us any of the, the, the individual homes. This would be a matter of, like, if you bought a home and you say, hey, Jim Jim got a handbook, I didn't get a handbook. 
it's not something that we could help you out with. You would have to just go to Landmark and say, hey, you didn't give me your the handbook when I bought my house. You get down to a thing where there's a shutoff valve in Lake Wobegon that's supposed to stop the water from proceeding mm. across into the pond. Yeah. Um, right now, there is no valve there. Yeah. There's no valve handle. It's missing. Well, I, I'd have to check the plan because admittedly, I don't remember this off the top of my head, but there was at one point, they put the valve, they put the, the housing in, but they didn't actually put the valve in. I remember that being discussed that they were like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we, when we get there. Um, I would imagine if it's still on the plan, then they're, they're, no. they're, oh, the valve isn't sold. Okay. They took the, uh, the hand. Yeah. Okay. So, It should be exercised from time to time. Well, it was left the last time. Both the open. Yeah. Landmark is, we basically took it from October, last October, to be able to hurry anything from And that's creating uh, some issues. So we're going to get out of, again, with a punch list, but uh, we were looking at support from the council that says you're going to ensure that we can give us a functioning working development before the well, and to reiterate to the fullest extent that the plan and the, the legal aspect that will allow us we will absolutely do that And earlier, they had also specifically said, yes, we'll verify the play liners as a fact. So I, I'd imagine, like, unless there's some recorded amendment or thing allowing otherwise, if it says they have to verify it, they're they're going to have to verify do you, it. Do you have a set of the developments? Okay, good. Good. Okay. Good. Well, that, that's, that's the guide I'm going to use at some point here when they submit as-built drawings and ask for their drawdown. So I can't go beyond that and ask for, you know, equipment manuals and operation manuals and things like that, that I agree would be beneficial for you folks to have. You know, that's just like when you bought your house, if they gave you a manual of every, all the equipment that went into your house, that's great. And that's, that's nice. They did that. A lot of builders do, but if they didn't do it, it's nothing Marion Township can step in and say, Hey, you need to do this, Mr. Developer. I mean, they won't replace it either. I didn't get a handbook because Tony and Jean had can, lost it. We can do all of the nice to do things. It's mm -hmm. it's the fire code stuff that scares me. Yes. Yeah. I'm a safety Nazi by by nature. It's what I did 42 years for you in the army. And fire chief, has that any of those pipes in the certified? The dry hydrant. Yeah. Did you give a report to the township? <laughs> Did get the volume uh, was there at that time? When was that done? Is it practically possible for you to do two dry hydrants on oh, apple blossom on the first? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I think it's not practical, but Assistant Chief, when when did you do the certification? Okay. So they okay. Do you have, and you we issued some to, correspondence uh, from the fire company <laughs> regarding the adequacy <laughs> of the fire? Okay. Right, right. There's, yeah. Um, is there any way you could provide a copy of that to, to the I township? Try. I, Okay, that's a wonderful start as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, that's that's all that I have. That's the good news. You won't see me again as the HOA person. <laughs> well, uh, next time I talk with you, it'll be citizen to supervisor. Have a wonderful night. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any other public comments? That's it's okay. There's there's always time for public comments. Um, with that, no more public comments are on the floor. We'll move into the main item for discussion. 
Um, we need to disclose that there was an executive session held after the April 27th Board of Supervisors meeting to discuss personnel matters. This lasted from 8.59 p.m. until 9.21 p.m. Agenda item number one, the Act 537. Um, as we've mentioned in the past, our SEO is actively doing inspections in the, in the Northwest and East districts now. A special meeting was held on May 23rd, 2023, the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, Attorney George, myself, Irene, and Sue were, were all present, and uh, we discussed some of the, uh, say, upcoming potential changes that we would need to make to the plan based around uh, kind of proposed financial viability. Um, Joe Valdez and uh, Kimberly DeRosa were also present from Hydroterra Engineering. I think overall the meeting went went well. It was received well that we were considering going a, a low pressure route rather than a, a gravity, which is about 60% of the total cost. Um, but it would also mean changing around the administrative order that we're under as well as the, the project milestones that it would require us to do uh, a special study, which is actually a lot more scarier than it sounds because most of the stuff is already produced for the special study. Um, Joe or Kim, thank you for you know coming out tonight. Yes. Is there anything that you'd like to, to to add on specifically about the meeting with the DEP or the kind of the, the direction that we're starting to take? Yeah, we just came. <clears throat> Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, based on what we had talked about with the DEP, the uh, geotechnical evaluations are going to be ramping up. It's going to be a multiple week to get them kind of ready, multiple week for them to do it, and then another couple of weeks for them to process it, and then you'll present it to the board like either June or July, I think was the yeah, time frame that we had talked about. Day. Yeah. So, okay. Um, kind of as a part of that, it's a further on agenda. I we want to have the town hall uh, okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't read that far ahead. Um, well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much again. That, uh, yeah, we would be lost without you, and we appreciate your services and the excellent communication that you provide us all the time. And it's a pleasure to work with you guys, and I'm very grateful. So yeah. thank you. I echo that sentiment, and I'm, I'm really thank appreciative you. of the the help that you gave us on getting that LSA grant. So that's the first step towards doing any of this. Um, so with the town hall meeting, we should, in my opinion, I'd, I'd much rather do it sooner rather than later, but we should probably wait until we have the results of the, the soil survey so that we can say like, yes, and here's why, or no, we're doing whatever, and here's why. Um, I prefer to not have that kind of out in the wings. Um, do you guys feel the same? Fine. Okay, so we'd be looking at like July, August for a town hall. I was thinking August, September. Uh, okay, September. August, September. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm I'm fine with that. So Sue, so I would say let's just kind of keep a pin. In the the town hall agenda item, we'll keep it on the the agenda, but we'll just take it off. I mean, as long as you, as long as, as long as you make sure we remember. That's okay. Thank you, Sue. Um, yes. Red Walter two fifty two Copper Beach Lane, Stonecroft. Um, we understand that our sewer services will be billed through uh, the township when this all occurs. And my question is, are our sewer rates going to be the same as the townships? Because that's inappropriate. So let me, let me I nodded a little prematurely there. So your, your sewer rates will stay the same. The way second class township code is written, you're not allowed to assess any cost 
for a yeah, municipal project. Okay, that bond that was the primary question that yeah. all the costs of this project that serves Kalshberg will not be in our that, rates and we will not be paying. More. That is correct. The only thing that might change is you might, and I'd have to check what the, the agreement is. I don't know if you're bulk customers already, but you may actually see it go down slightly because of us being a bulk rate with the township rather than with you guys being individual homeowners. So as there, long as we're not paying the capital cost yeah, you're, no. because we've already paid for them as part of our property. Yeah, no, that's that's specifically prohibited. Not not that we would do that anyway, mind you, but that's specifically prohibited as yeah. Okay. Um in terms of the Act five thirty seven and similar. The, the third agenda item is actually the appointment of uh, a new SEO. Unfortunately, Alan Madera and Burson Biotech are going to be closing out shop by the end of the year, um, and we will need to appoint a new SEO. Um, we have received a proposal from System Design Engineering. Um, unfortunately, though, it does not include the, the management of... Okay, JB Environmental. I have not... I haven't looked at it yet. Um, but uh, we need to find one that is willing to do the sewer management program. Um, I know there was some discussion with Hydroterra kind of off the cuff when we were at the DEP thing. Um, that we can we can maybe pivot, we can we can rethink this a little bit based on the new constraints. Um, I wanna kind of table it with the board that potentially if we go with a, a firm, whether it's Hydroterra or system design engineering, um, maybe we put some, some controls in place and go the route of letting the pumpers do it like a lot of people had asked. Um, the concern here is still consistency, reliability of, of the reporting and stuff like that. So we don't have repeat journeys for people getting their tank pumped out. Um, but if we can put something in place where they have to legally register with the township, and Jim, you kind of missed a lot of this. So I'm going to give you a bit of a recap. Um, pumpers, in order to do the inspection, have to register with the township. And then they have to submit a, a pretty specific type of report and type of information to the DEP for it to be valid. Um, so the thinking is, if we have a firm that is willing to manage the actual keeping track of what houses need it in what order, when they're going to send out notices, like advance notices, like, hey, you got to do this this year. Hey, you still haven't done it. You have six months left. Hey, you haven't done it. It's due. Um, that sort of thing. If they can do the tracking end of it, um, and they have a standardized form that they're able to use, whether it's paper or digital, that maybe we can ease up a little bit on the, the control of having the SEO actually have to do the inspection and just have the SEO be sort of the, the proxy for those forms, make sure the forms are right, and then submit them to the DEP. So there's going to be more to talk about this, but we are going to have to appoint a, a new SEO after- Which we pretty much was discussed whenever we first did this. Yeah. Could we have the pumpers? So yeah. Far. And, and yeah. I, still, I still think, and I had a conversation with a, a gentleman when I was standing out at the polls, for the first couple of years of us doing this, this is something that we, we need to have structure on. We need to have as little variability as possible because it's, it's a, a new and novel thing. A lot of people are going to have a hard time getting it done, for lack of a better term. Once everything's up and running and everything's well established, I'm not opposed to having the pumpers do it, but we just have to make sure that we have the right control mechanisms in place to make sure that we have the right things getting done, the right things being documented, and the right things being sent to the right place at the right time. So, so we're on the radar. Yeah, we are, we are very much on the radar. Yeah. And to put it bluntly, we don't have like the office staff. We don't have the bandwidth to be able to manage a program of this size in house. Are there any pumpers out there that can fulfill this yeah, obligation? Yeah, plenty, plenty of them, yeah. Well, then let's well, get a hold of them. And it's, it's, it's not the, but it's not the pumper. It's, it's the SEO that we, we need someone to say, yeah. you know, hey, this section yeah. is due. Yeah. You need to get this so, done. The pumpers that are fully capable of doing the inspection, right. like they're, they're licensed to do that. That's kind of the, the local half of it. We need somebody that is going to be able to certify that stuff and keep track of, okay, Jim, Jim is supposed to pump out sometime during this year, sending a notice and saying, hey, you got to do it this year. Part of the way through saying, hey, we still haven't seen a report come through from, from a pumper where you haven't called us to come out and inspect, and inspect it, which is always still an option. Um, you need to do it following up kind of the, the policing of it, if you will. We need to have, whether it's Hydroterra or SDE or the, uh, forgive me, so I, JB. J, JB Environmental is in one ear and out the other. Um, having a firm manage that portion, of it, very similar to how we have craft manage the building permits. Right. So we just need to look at the proposals and then we would just have to amend our ordinance to allow the pumpers and we want to be, we want to obviously run it through Colin, 
um, make sure that we're very specific on what the controls are, what the requirements are for a pumper so that they don't just come out and go, yeah, it's a septic tank. Here's a cocktail napkin that says everything's okay. Like we want to make sure that we've got our ducks in a row. Well, let's here. move forward with it. Yeah. So um, well, admittedly, I have not read the JB environmental thing and I believe Hydro Terra, you're going to, you're going to give us a proposal as well. Hmm. Problem really is the sewer management program, and I believe that Alan was following the pumper truck around and observing. Mm -hmm. uh, He's got to certify that. that they've all been pumped. Yeah, yeah. right. So, Alan seems like Alan's biggest thing is not having office staff to really manage the program. Mm -hmm. He indicated to us that he would still be willing to go out and observe those pumps. Um, we prepared an application for the sewer management program a number of years ago that eliminates, I should say, it basically puts the onus of, of uh, managing the system on the application itself. Mm -hmm. so our, our, app, our app actually uh, would allow a pumper to come in digitally and install it and insert the information that is obtained from each one lot system. Now we'll go into a database. Okay. All right. So then the database will mm -hmm. start to uh, accumulate uh, the inventory out there, whether it's septic tanks or you know, cesspools or sand mounds or whatever's on the checklist so that we could generate a report pretty much uh, just by push of a couple of buttons because the application is set to say 15 cesspool, 25 sand mounds were observed this period. Baffles were faulty and you know five of the septic tanks, whatever it might be, we would be able to generate that report for the township. Uh, we are SEO, so we could sign off on it, but you know, some of the nuts and bolts are not clear. I took a brief look at the ordinance. It does suggest that a pumper could do it or the SEO, so it's pretty open on that end. Um, I can tell you that our experience with having a pumper do it in the past is that a lot of pumpers will, don't really want to fill out paperwork. Uh, they just want to stick the hose in there and suck out, you know, 500 gallons of stuffage and move on down the road. Um, we believe that the most efficient program would have the pumpers to do it, but I can tell you that there will be a little bit of an obstacle there mm -hmm. trying to convince them uh, that this is an easier way and what the additional cost would be. Yeah, so the, what, what it comes down to is if we put that in place, they'd have to register with the township. That's part of the law anyway. Um, if you want to, to provide that service to the residents of Marion Township, you would have to comply with the, the obligations of the, of the ordinance of the law. So um, my, my biggest thing, like it's great that you have that app and that, that kind of leans me your direction uh, for the capability, but we, we need somebody that is not only going to be able to track the stuff that has been pumped out, but if people aren't prodded about this, they're not going to do it. So we need we need to have some sort of cadence in place that there's the database of the properties, what quadrant they're in, what years they're due to say, okay, we've got to send letters out saying, Hey, you got to do that this year. Or, Hey, you missed it. It was supposed to be due January 31st. It's now February 1st. We still haven't gotten an, a, an inspection report and you yeah, need to get that done. Basically allow that first time the computer pump in year 2023, if the township wanted us to send a recurring notice in June, the app would tell us who hasn't pumped mm -hmm. in that, in that uh, specific area. We could send out another recurring notice. Most of all that is tracked by the app, not physical stuff. You know, yeah, that's, that's what makes sense. It's a different story. Yeah. Uh, what's exactly nice about funny. the application yeah. is if they're able to get an email address from the homeowner, uh, we can then go ahead and send them that notification two years down the road. You can send them the report electronically. So there really isn't a paper change of hands. There's not 
merely administrative costs that's associated with you know trying to keep track of seven hundred a thousand pumps yeah. you know, over a four year period. I'm not saying that this is the answer, but I believe that it might be part it's, of the solution. I think uh, it's going to be a big. Honestly, I think it's a big part of the solution. So yeah. let's let's look at the proposals um, and if, send something, anything our way. But knowing kind of that you've given us the explanation of what capabilities you have, that sounds exactly what we need. We need some way of reminding people to do it. We need some way of making sure that they have done it if they have. And then we need the third portion of it, which is the, the actual filing with the DEP. We need to make sure that that's done. So if we can check all three of those boxes, we're, we're in good shape. Yeah. And we're glad to bring the proposals to the Okay. We'd like to, you know, be, be able to reach out to SDE and see if they would be willing to, you know, play a part of this. Again, you know, being in Chester County, we're not going to send an SEO up here to watch the call. Uh, and, and really get involved in the SEO part, but yeah. we feel like we have a tool that might help some and of the other results. I, I think that's where if we if we kind of marry that to the having the pumpers do it rather than the SEO chasing yeah. a truck around, that that might be the best fit based on all of our constraints that we have in play now. Because we we could you know our proposal is we could take on the SEO duties typically, but not not the sewer management program. Yeah, not chasing the haul trucks. Yeah. So this you know, and all the administrative things that go with it and tracking down people and sending out letters and all that. You guys stuff, so. might know the, the answer off the top of your head, but I know typically every year we put a point uh, an SEO and an alternate SEO. Is that something that could conceivably be split between the sure. two? Like if we yeah. appointed SDE and Hydroterra no as problem. primary and alternate, then you guys could decide amongst yourselves who's doing what. Well, I think you would want to spell it out that the primary is going basically the SEO well, work well, yeah. and the alternate is providing the uh, sewer management program and, and administrative. Yeah. And, that, that, and that's fine. That seems like a good fit for me. Because, yeah, if you're willing to take on the okay. part with the app or without, that's great. That was yeah, the one component. Okay, the, that was yeah. the one component we just didn't have the manpower to, to, to dedicate to that because I understand it's, it's, it's pretty extensive and you know, you're, you're spending time to come out and certify that it's being pumped and then do, do an inspection and all that. and. You know, that's where it just takes a lot of time. So, so if the haulers can do it and everybody's comfortable that they're going to report accurately, which they're licensed, they should be doing. So uh, yeah, that should work. So let's let's obviously we'll make it good and formal, <laughs> give us a proposal. We'll ruminate on that. And then Colin, if I could ask you for a little bit of homework for next time, take a look at the ordinance, the mandatory pump out <laughs> ordinance, and see what we would need to change. Or, or alter or bolster around the wording for allowing a uh, pumper to do it, but putting some stipulations in around like having to report it to uh, the SEO in a certain format. Okay. Like, I, I don't even begin to know how we would put that in, in the ordinance form, but the, 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 the use of the app too. Don't, don't you hire a hauler through a bid process? Mm -hmm. No, so individual homeowners. Professional service. Yeah, so what, what would happen? Right, so your, your, your ordinance needs to require the property owners to hire a pumper who will report their activities to the township. State, right. state yeah. law actually requires that if, if we are allowing the pumper to do the inspection, they have to register with so you can't just call some guy that has a pickup truck and shop back. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but okay, but they can register but not report exactly what they're doing. Exactly. Pumpers. Pumpers have to. Uh, they have the ability to do it. They have the, the jurisdictional authority, I would say, to to do the inspection. We need to make sure that they're doing the inspections the right way and the way that we are expecting them to do them. So again, I'll use the example that they're not just giving somebody a cocktail app and it says, yes, you have a septic tank. Like, it, it, has to, it has to follow a certain regimen and a set of restrictions to make sure that it, it's going to be with what SD is going to look for, hydro terror is going to have to put in into their database to it's going to do it as part of yes, the, uh, sorry, the ordinance already has a check. So... I think that's pretty much set the stone or some basic questions in there. Some of them might be a little bit, but I think it might be, 
I think it, it might make sense for us to require it to be submitted through the approved through approved channels because it's going to cost us time and money to have them submit a paper copy and then have one of one of your staff input it and then that's a thing you mean to like application. Because I'm assuming it's it's a web form. Like we were all banding around the term app, but it's it's essentially a web page. It's a web page. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a web page with a post request for something. Yes. Yeah. So and we have we have drafting warnings in front of the township that we have to piece of language in there required to touch on this you know one more than three by the township. Send it all to us and we'll yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll discuss it at the next possible meeting, but I think that's probably the best course to take because we have the two set of SMUs that are sitting in the room here and we have the capabilities to, to manage yeah. the program. Yep. That I mean, we'll want to reach out to JD environmental as well. Oh, we'll, we'll, read, yeah. like, we'll read the proposal, but if I'm, if I'm being white, you guys are both known how it's, you know how you operate and like what you do. And, uh, yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> Short, short of there being a glaring and horrible thing in the fee schedule or something like that. It's, it's kind of a little Can we go back to Fred's question? I sure. turned to Chuck and said, was that response accurate? I'm not so sure that it was. The uh, not being able to bill? Right. Uh, the my sewer rates, any it, change in sewer rates. So their, their change in rates wouldn't have any impact by our municipal project or the, the Act 537 that we're doing for Stoutford because, and again, unless I'm wildly mistaken on this, so please correct me if I'm wrong, that you're not allowed to bill municipal projects like uh, of this nature to unaffected properties. We, we wouldn't be able to spread the cost across. The I don't think you have different rates for different properties. That's what I understand. You're going to have, you're going to buy bulk sewer treatment from Wilma's store. Yeah. And then you have operating costs with the well, conveyance well, there. Correct, correct. So whatever the, the bulk rate from Wollmelsdorf is going to stay the same. So their their cost is going to be bulk rate. Conceivably, our cost is going to be bulk rate plus the cost of the project for Stafford. Are you getting billed from Wollmelsdorf? They are. Correct. So I don't know how the intermunicipal agreement takes addresses that for, for but, township residents. But, but Jack, hear me out. At the end of the day, we're, we're not going to be billing them for the like 233 EDUs or whatever it is. Their 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 sewer rate is the, the bulk because they've already paid for their project or they, they would right. have a they would just they would pay a uh, a use a yeah. usage rate a, char a charge for yeah. whatever the yeah sewer so it's, cost. It's, so, it's the one slice of that so, that so pot chart not oh so I mean, they don't pay the conveyance charge yeah. You're yeah. saying it would be yeah. they would they would they would just pay a service charge like they do now. I mean, yes. the, your your rate might go up nominally by five or ten percent to cover the township's cost of administrative but of administration. If, but for if we're if we're getting sending the bills, if we're getting bulk rate, it may go down based on the fact that we're getting it at a true, higher point. So I like it, it, it's uh, okay. Yeah, it, we're, we're I think we're we're splitting hairs here. But the bottom line is, the the rate you're paying is the actual use when the sewer goes in. The, the cost that would be borne by the people that are in the affected area would be the use plus the cost of the project. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that, that other sliver is not something that can be spread around. That has to stay tied to. But I don't. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it can be a big sliver, but it's a sliver. But, but I mean, it's whether... Uh, the rate will be what the rate is. Let me, let me phrase this a very specific way. The, the change for the, the residents of, of Stonecroft would not be any different if we just... Let's take the Act 537 requirement of a, a sewer system in Stouchburg. If we said, hey, you guys are going to be bulk customers through Marion Township now, that change would be what it would be, no matter what. Like, full stop. Yeah. It's not going to change in, in any capacity other than that. Plus administrative. Well, I mean, but again, there's it might be less because Walmart yeah. isn't charging them as much because they're not sending out individual bills. It so might be. It might be. We can't. Uh, we can't guarantee. Yeah. But, but you're yeah. not going to get charged. For yeah. 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 The new people. Correct. The new people. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, correct. plus whatever the rate is. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So correct. let me let me put a let me put a real quick pin in that because we're we're burning through time. 
So but they will not have a tapping. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're already connected. Correct. Yeah. Correct. They're not going to have any of the other stuff. So. Um, just, just to circle back to that, I can't promise anything other than the sun's going to come up of, and the fact that you're not going to see the costs associated with the, the project levied in. Um, so in the efforts of time, yes, we're going to move forward to item number four, uh, which is the uh, re resignation of our assistant secretary, Linda Schonk. Uh, she resigned effective May 5th, 2023. It's with regret that we accept that. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the resignation. Second. With regret. With regret, of course. Irene, second. Yes. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. As fortune would have it, we actually have somebody who's uh, willing and capable to serve as an interim assistant secretary. Uh, Melissa Benjamin is a college student who is uh, fairly well versed in what needs to be done in an office setting like this. She's actually kind of been doing some uh, training, I'll say with Sue, the past week, and uh, is, a, is a great fit for the positions. Honestly, a shame that we were only going to have her for the summer, uh, but we need an official motion to bring her in as the interim assistant secretary. So I will make a motion to uh, appoint Melissa Benjamin as the interim assistant secretary for Marion Township. Second. Roll we'll call, Peter. Aye. 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 Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, one of the things that she'll be working on is uh, helping us kind of retool the the job posting and make sure that we we do some interviews to make sure that we find somebody that's going to be a good long term. Fit. Well, we hold on. We already set the. Uh, uh, the mm, is it is assistant secretary fundamentally different from interim assistant secretary from a from a legal standpoint? Because we have a rate for assistant secretary, we do not have a rate for interim <laughs> assistant secretary. Is, is it is it the same well, by it's, extension? It's, it's the same because because yeah. an assistant secretary is that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So. so okay. So that that's what my concern was. Is like uh, I thought they were the same, but if you had a concern, so let's talk okay. about it. Yep. Um, no, I just yeah. want to make yeah, sure yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all yeah. out there. On. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next item, Stonecroft Village, the deed for open space, lot 215. Uh, lot 215 is the item that contained all the open space properties in Stonecroft Village. Section number eight of this, uh, which fronts William Penn Boulevard, had been conveyed uh, to the Stonecroft HOA when it should have been conveyed and deeded to Marion Township. Uh, Attorney McFarland is working, uh, or is, excuse me, waiting uh, for an exhibit and legal description from Landmark. Are we still waiting for that? We are. Mm, okay. Um, are we able to like give him a call, send him a letter? Yeah, I can. thank you. Um, so until we have that, there's really nothing that can be done, but at the end of the day, it needs to be transferred over to us for proper assignment of that parcel. Yep. Uh, the emergency management coordinator's report. Um, I'll turn it over to Irene for that. I'll, I'll be quick. So um, John completed the applications to the Bucks County Community College Public Safety Training Center uh, Boy, that's one that's sentence. A, that's a, yeah. a training membership program contracts for the fire rescue training. Um, the Marion Fire Company has a scheduled hazmat operations refresher class May 24th and 31st. Uh, that is one of the mandatory certifications that all firefighters must possess in Pennsylvania for OSHA and PA workers comp law. Um, he's going to be working with the fire company and our mutual aid fire companies for more classes the rest of the year. Um, a check was made out to Bucks County Community College uh, because uh, that was something that was prior approved for that partic for, for participation in that program, and that was for the $1,300. Um, uh, he also recently completed the Infrastructure Disaster Management Certificate Program from Texas A&M. Um, that was uh, completed on May 10th, and that was uh, two to three classes held throughout uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey in the past six months. Uh, to summarize, the in Infrastructure Disaster Management Certification mm -hmm. Program covered Homeland Security Infrastructure Disaster Management, Critical Infrastructure, Risk Management, Community-Based Planning, and Whole Community Resilience Strategies on Critical Sectors of Our Community. Uh, there were courses on Public Services, Healthcare Infrastructure, Electric Power Systems, and Disaster Management for Water and Wastewater Utilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, he also just passed his hazardous materials technician level training final exam 
through Bucks County Community College and will be a certified hazardous material technician upon completion of his final skills. Uh, he is going to be attending a wide area search class in Tawanda, Pennsylvania on June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, hosted by Bradford County Department of Public Safety and taught by Texas A&M instructors, uh, excuse me, instructors. Uh, the class is funded by the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA. He's asking for reimbursement for three nights at a hotel and a few meals. Uh, the class covers best practices to mobilize, organize, and deploy resources needed to perform wide area searches during natural disasters, et cetera. And uh, just to point out, we had two uh, searches in Marion in the past two years. Uh, he also completed his critical infrastructure security and resilience awareness tra training at Pima in Harrisburg. And he is going to talk with Chuck about ordering incident commands and management boards with the maps that he needs. Um, so he wants to make sure he's, he, he discussed it with me, he wants to make sure he's actually gonna complete these classes to kind of put a definite, this is exactly what we need for the township with respect to uh, emergency management. And he'll know that after the wide area search training. So I know I spoke quickly, uh, he's doing a lot of stuff and um, he will get us an idea over what the reimbursement is for the hotel and the meals. Well, the meals are not. I'll keep, I'll make him keep it to one meal a day because we don't know what John. So, <laughs> all right. So I'll, I'll have him get you guys a number. So this, this is just an off the cuff. We should set, yeah, the, he has a budget. Should set up for DM. <clears throat> but he has a budget. I'm right. just saying as a general rule, if we have a, a situation like this, we should probably have something like put it in a handbook where if you're allotted a per DM, if you're traveling for a approved <laughs> purpose. But sense. yeah. All right. Okay. So on to the next item, which is the Creekview Dairy operation at 952 Route 419. Uh, they have made all the necessary improvements and have submitted their notice of termination to the BCCD. So with any luck, we'll see that come that, through. That just came in yesterday, I think. I just saw that email. Um, yeah. So... Okay. Yeah, the, the conservation district will be reviewing that, and I'm also going to take a look at that as it may also uh, satisfy the flims out of the project of the town. Okay, fantastic. Okay, next is the temporary construction easement and permanent draining easement for the culvert replacements. Uh, do we have any update on that? Uh, no update. Um, I still need to get in touch with some of the property owners. Actually, the one that's out of state. I got to verify the phone number because it um, was disconnected. So mm -hmm. I'm going to track that down. Okay. And, you know, I do need to get those in place um, as we work towards the next agenda item. Um, we want to get those easements in place before we proceed with the uh, installation of the other culverts. Okay. Uh, speaking of the culverts, mm -hmm. uh, Engineer Hess has prepared the bid documents for opening at the June Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, this would encompass the uh, remaining installations of the precast concrete boxes, uh, related site improvements like guide rail and uh, other associated aspects of the project along Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, uh, and Marion Drive South, um, and Reichert Road, which uh, we really at this point is just the, the guide rail and the final paving. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping that up. So you probably see uh, I had provided advertisement dates about back. <clears throat> so we'll put smaller ads in the newspaper that will direct contractors to the pen, pen bid system for online bidding uh, with the intention of having uh, hopefully some bids to evaluate and present to the board at the June meeting so we can get that project back on track. Okay. And uh, kind of the next extension of that, we're looking at the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Um, based on the, the proximity of the gas line, this may be one that we want to consider putting out to bid as well. Um, that's been, you know, I have a preliminary design done. Um, I don't know if we need to talk about it here in the meeting, but um, I also have a cost estimate, preliminary cost estimate. It's getting close to the threshold for public bidding, okay. as you indicated. But if we, um, if we, <clears throat> get wise and do this as efficiently as possible. It's my hope we can simply uh, 
solicit quotes from various contractors okay. uh, with the hopes of avoiding the bidding, paying the additional prevailing wage rates because it yeah. is a pretty small project. Again, I think it will be yeah. justifiable that it uh, will be less than the bid, uh, public bidding threshold. Um, so I will probably mail yeah. out that information okay. because yeah. again, I, I have drafts yeah. here tonight, but we could you can look at it after the meeting. We can discuss in more detail. Um, but we're right around that magic number for bidding. So. Okay. Can you run that through Charlie and make yes, sure that he's would, on board with us? We would uh, make sure that, you know, we can use some liquid fuels funds on this project. Yeah. So I will get him the plans. And what we'll probably do is, as we solicit quotes, um, provide a uh, bid form for them to use or a quote form, I guess I should say. Um, that will follow the PennDOT standards, and that will also be provided for Charlie for his uh, pre-approval before we would seek any, any quotes on that work. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Next is the line painting. Uh, if we're going to do this through the Berks County Cooperative Purchase Council, we need to set the quantities by June 1st. Um, I'll be honest, uh, we should probably look at doing it externally because of the problems that we've had with A1 line painting the past number of years. Um, are you guys kind of in favor of open market on that rather than going through the cooperative? Yes. I know, like Kelly, you you called that person extensively. I called them extensively. I made five phone calls. How yeah. many did you make? Yeah, yeah as they yeah. Bush called, I called, Irene called, and then they ultimately came out when they didn't tell anybody and started painting lines. So uh, I'd like to avoid that this year if we can, because that was a huge headache last year and it was a huge headache the year before that. So. But then again, there's always problems. Oh, there's, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's always problems. The, what I, what I want to avoid is if we can avoid walking face forward into that door again, I'd, I'd at this point, I'd, I'd rather take my chances with other unknown problems. So do you have an idea what you're going to spend on? Uh, Are you going to cap it at a certain I don't have a dollar figure off the top of my head. I could probably... It was, it was, I want to say it was about 16,000. Yeah. Because the um, public bidding threshold was 22,000. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not going to be over that. Um, so, I just how do you, check. and I'm assuming you could use liquid fuels funds for that. So, how will you we identify what roads and so where I, anything's done? I have to pull it up, but I have a, did you, do you have my map? Oh, oh. List. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I have it's a written list, but I also have a, a map that's divided into okay. it's divided into sixths. Okay. And the yep. thing on this was once we get past the, the hurdle of the culverts, mm -hmm. we do two two uh, quadrants, two two mm -hmm. areas of line painting every year, and we do the opposite side of the township where road paving is. Got gotcha. so we kind of just rotate our oh. itself around. Yep. Um, so well, I again, have, if you're going to solicit quotes. You know, and, and you're thinking it's going to be for that dollar amount. It's something yeah. we'd want to run through Charlie Harris again, yeah, to make sure um, at, everything at that's done. The itinerary when you talk to Charlie, it's uh, okay. roughly would be one third of the township, which is I think 34 to 34 or six miles of okay. roadway. So it would be about let's call it 12 for the sake of argument. It would be about 12 mile linear painting miles worth of paint. I guess I can start with this and provide that to Charlie, but he's going to want to see how, how it's being specified and how the quotes are being solicited. And that's you. I can send you this. Yeah, so yeah I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll box in the packet that I had last year that we gave to A1, which was, this is this road, it starts here, it stops here, it's this many feet, it's white lines. It's this road, it starts here, it stops here, it's this many feet of white line and yellow. Like, I, I had a pretty painful breakdown in that, and they still managed to... to and not manage to, to execute it well. And but, with the crosswalks, the crosswalks yeah. are a big thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically, the, the, the crosswalks are, are right. They're just right, not right. what you were expecting. Right. Yeah. Because to me, visually, it's like, oh. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. But yeah. that, that, yeah. that is functionally yeah. like a crosswalk. Yeah. 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 You, you ordered a, a steak. It just wasn't the steak you were, you were hoping for. Um, yeah. I said steak. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, that's by the cup. Yep. So... With that said, I, I'm, we're not going to motion on it right now, but I think we should get that together and we should put it out for, for uh, not bid, but solicitation of uh, proposals, um, quotes. Yep. So, okay. Uh, next is the Comcast franchise renewal. I just uh, have to send them an email. So, no updates there. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
the good news is we haven't really spent any money yet. We agreed, we we've we've agreed yeah. that we're we yeah. to do it, but we haven't yeah. actually we done really anything. Got the payments are uh, let's say thirty hundred. Yeah, probably, so. that's that's off of the yeah. existing agreement. Yeah. So uh, next, the birth. We we haven't paid them. Anything. No, we haven't paid them anything yet. Um, good. Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403, uh, the amendment for keeping uh, pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, Jim and I were at the Joint Planning Commission meeting that was held on Thursday, May 18th at the Heidelberg Township. Um, I think that went well. The, the only questions that they had, and Colin was there too, don't want to forget Colin. Um, the, have a good night, guys. Um, that a lot of other municipalities are interested in participating in that because of the, the nature of that when they read through their own stuff, they were like, oh man, we're, uh, we're not, we're not in a good shape either because just about everybody that is keeping these types of animals is out of compliance. So there is an appetite to, to not just have Marion change it, but also get on board with having it be a, a much larger scope within the, the zoning. Um, the one, one of uh, several concerns that was raised was uh, putting a, a maximum limit on there. So they're all going to look at that. We're going to we're going to get everybody's critiques kind of together and compare notes and see what what fits best for everybody. But my my standpoint on this still, and, and Colin, I mentioned this at the time, and I think you you kind of know where I was coming from. Is we have limiting factors in there, like you have to have a certain number of feet per per bird for a run. You have to have a certain number of feet for a hen house. That if you try to put that on a quarter acre lot, you can't. Because like, unless you have only like one or two birds or something like that. So it, it sort of limits itself until you get past that one acre sort of size. And then at that point, it's, it's open season. So we'll see what everybody else comes back with. But it should be, should be a collaborative effort. And we have everybody's interest. Because I know like Mitch from, I believe he's from Heidelberg, um, actually called me the one night and was like, I read this. And then I was just like, I should check ours. And then he checked his and he's like, we're all out of compliance. <laughs> so right. there's there's a, a certain updating that everybody's looking at it now and going, yeah, okay, yeah. So more to come on that, but it was a very good meeting. It was very constructive. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be next month necessarily or even the month after that based on kind of the, the internal reviewing that they're going to do. But everybody kind of agreed on like, we're not we're not going to throw the book at anybody about this because we we agree that it's, it's, it's wrong. It's not fit for purpose as is within our communities. Uh, excuse me. Next up is the computers and cybersecurity. Uh, Scouts honor. I will do that at some point when I'm not running around like a headless chicken. Um, but we need to get all the computers hooked up. Um, I went out and got the stuff for stringing it along the wall. And I'm going to put a little shelf up there so that it hides it. I know you said like pr okay. pretty doesn't matter, but uh, there's a certain there's a certain pride that I have to take in my work um, that, that it'll it'll not look like crap, and we can put some like awards or signs or something up there, um, and that'll get. Everything tied together. I, I'm, <laughs> all things being equal, anyway. I, I, I have to I have to be a little OCD about some of the things. That's it. But uh, we'll get that queued up, um, and then the next step. I've already started working on the um, Active Directory stuff, getting that set up so that we can we can enroll the computers in a, a domain. I, I will. It like lags all the I will take a look at it. Well. So, something we want to talk about is those computers were slightly dated when I started six years ago. We should consider getting replacement computers. And it doesn't have to be an arm and a leg. There was one that I referred to you for, like, it was like a hundred bucks, um, that we can, we can get replacements and kind of just swap them out because they're, minimum, those things are eight years old. And yeah. then Melissa that can help you get the data over and do it efficiently. Oh, that's just a yeah. copy paste overnight. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but well, yeah. she's like the, the other thing is the, the, yeah. the server is online. We just have to connect it. It's yes. much like the other thing over there. So yes. when when I have some time, I'll get everybody squared away. But there's I've I've got a, a laundry list, and I won't burn too much time on it of things we need to do. We need to get everybody enrolled in the domain. We need to our our wireless is not set up right. I need to change the. I can I can get them, but. Ultimately, what's going to happen is that rather than being tucked away in that corner is going to be basically right behind these TVs, which is center point on the building. So you're going to have the ability to use the Wi-Fi in that room, in this room, and in the office. And we have to make sure, we have to make sure it's not going to go outside. We have well, to make sure it's secure. It's, so there, yeah. I, we'll, I'll talk after okay. me, but you don't, you don't have to choke down the radio on that. You just you secure it differently. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah. 
and it's actually oh yeah 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 it's it's i can't guarantee that it's going to be the snappiest signal but this is why i ran a cable for you like plug plug in um and if push comes to shove there's enough cables that i ran that we can put a, a little hot spot in there that's that's not the end of the world um <clears throat> Okay, so uh, next is the cyber insurance. Um, Irene, you've kind of taken the reins on that. Do you want to did, add anything? Did, did, did you take a look at that policy? What's your opinion? It, it's mean, like everybody else's. Yeah, yeah. And I guess, I guess, Colin, if I could just ask you, I know I had I briefly talked about it with Andy about cybersecurity, et cetera. Um, I mean, you see it in the news all the time. I know it, 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 it's off the cuff. What's your opinion about cyber insurance? I mean, I think it's a necessary evil. At this point, we have assets and, and sensitive data that in the event if stuff was hacked, I mean. Benef I, beneficial but costly? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not so sure. Yeah. I, have, I'll be honest. I understand yeah. the risk, and I'm not sure the risk the risk is at a level that, we would, that would necessitate that type of insurance. If we had a ton of stuff that had like social security numbers in it, or like I mean, we've got our own bank statements, but that's about it. Like we don't, we're not a, we're not a treasure trove of information that if somebody did compromise no, us, but we are. Uh, there are assets. There are assets that can be. Yeah. Yeah. So with that said, yeah. there there are yeah. other. Let's let's keep that as a as a, yeah. a an option as an idea. But there are other things that we can do to locally secure the data. Okay. Um, Part of it is backing it up so that you're not vulnerable to ransomware attacks and things like that. Um, there's there's a lot of things that we can do to mitigate the risk without actually going full full tilt and okay. spending money. Um, from an, I'll, I'll go physical assets on this, yeah. but generally speaking, you don't spend more money to secure a physical asset than it's worth. Right. So I, I I'm not, that. not throwing a, yeah. a price tag on our yeah. data, mind no, no, you. No, no, but no, no, no. again, like it's it's not my realm of expertise. My my yeah. concern is after having. Completed a CLE and looking at the, do you ever look at the CISA.gov mm -hmm. website? Yeah. Um, we have to have a cyber action plan in place. That's something that's always that's beneficial, just like we need in the handbook and all these other policies and procedures. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's a number of yeah. things that if we're going to comply with, let's, let's I'll just pull yeah. one out of the hat. Like if it's if we're going to follow like NIST guidelines for mm -hmm. things, there's certain things that we have to do for data security. Yeah. Um, a lot of that, if we go the, the Microsoft route with that G1 license and we're, we're up on the cloud, a lot of that Microsoft is already taken care of. So the only things that we really have to worry about is like password complexity, password refresh times. And that's something that I, I do this kind of stuff all day, every day. We can write a, a, a required hardening guide. That way, mm -hmm. if there was something, and let's say we got sued, mm -hmm. we can demonstrate that we have done our, our due diligence mm -hmm. in respect to securing. Exactly. So, exactly. I, I just, from, from, a, from a risk perspective, the township's liability is not in a person suing the township for, you know, a, a hacker getting right, information, right. but it's it, it's more along the lines of the township having to pay ransom right. to mm. get its yeah. data. Back. And there's there's again very easy, effective ways to prevent yourself from having a, a ransomware attack. And the easiest thing to do is just to do backup offsite. So we have something local, and it just every night it does an incremental. Once a week, it does a full. And that way, if somebody, you, you get, let's say, Sue, you click a link and it gets a ransomware thing on your computer, you just go, okay, I'm going to re-image the computer. Who cares? I've got everything backed up. So yeah. that's... And, 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 and that, that, that's my, my biggest concern. Um, and also, you know, trying to be forward thinking again, um, as, as you made an excellent statement, we're, we're, we've, we've inherited these legacies. Mm -hmm. We've inherited these problems that are so in our face that they're ready to blow up. And I don't want to do that moving forward. I don't want to leave the next group a, yeah. a bigger problem. And so if we could implement good practices now and kind of get the ball rolling and kind of put it on automatic, that's, and, that's what I want to do. And I, I'm, yeah. I, I like the yeah. thinking. I'm 100% yeah. with you. But much like Colin's statement, it's beneficial but costly. Uh, a yeah. Good examples in that proposal from whoever that was with the, the cyber yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they, I, had I, a, they had a sonic wall firewall. So it's a good piece of hardware. Right. It's just it's massively overkill. For, for right. our, our, uh, yeah, yeah. From, from, um, yeah, yeah. Important. So it's it's yeah. beneficial, but it's yeah. costly. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to make sure that we're giving this a good good look and and making sure that we're doing what we should be doing and, and moving forward. And 
if, if you're going to be able to get all these things implemented yeah. and, and give I'll, us, I'll be able to get yeah. us in a good posture for, yeah. for cybersecurity. And, and I think, you know, that's what you need to do at this point. You know, and I'm not trying to put oh, no, no, pressure no, you. No, it's, but, yeah. and, and, and I, honestly, I, I, again, I can't thank you enough because you're, you're the IT guy, you know. I, I don't know what kind of position we'd be in if you weren't doing all these things for us. So. You're the it yeah. guy. You're the, yeah, the it guy. guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. I guess Colin, have you had other townships have experience with getting ransoms or anything you know of? No, I, no, I no, I haven't. So yeah, you see I think, it on the news. You see it on the news, but I think I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, of, I've heard of law firms in the area being so, subject to well, ransom. Yeah, I was saying law firms are pretty pretty so attractive law targets. Law firms are much are much uh, bigger yeah. target yeah. than yeah. local municipalities that have small population. Yeah. Small yeah. population. And I, 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 I guess I worry. Um, and again, it's something that I'm, I'm learning more about as we mm. progress. And you know, again, just trying to be better prepared for the future. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. Next item I'll, on the. I'll take the next one. Okay. All right. So uh, the next item for discussion is the building of property renovations demolition, and this ties into the to the next uh, item on the uh, on the agenda for a proposed new building. So as, as more information has just come into light, um, I recently attended a grant workshop that was sponsored by Representative John Swiak. What did she do? Oh, so I'll, I'll incorporate three different things. Yeah. So um, it, was, it was a very good session. Um, and so, I, again, having being fairly new at this and having put together other things kind of piecemeal, we're, we're, we're kind of used to saying, well, look, how much is this going to cost? This going to cost? This going to cost? At the grant workshop, it's basically, if we want to apply for grants for a new building, it's it's how everyone else is deeming it shovel ready. You have to have everything in place. You have to have almost everything ready to go. It doesn't make sense for me to call this group to do this, this group to call that, to do this or that. It makes more sense for us to have a a project management company that's going to take care of everything A to Z. So you know, we just we pick a building design that we like and we put it out for bids saying we need to do we the following to, things. Exactly. It needs to be asbestos needs to be remediated. The building needs right. to be knocked down. Right. We need to salvage certain things. We need to essentially, it's on them to meet our requirements yes. and, and to manage everything. Um, there still might be some things we may have to bid out, like, for example, getting like temporary office uh, stuff. But I, I would imagine that a good Project management company is going to meet all of our needs. I was going to say, put that in as part of the right. requirements. Right. So, so you're you're talking about a design build approach. Um, we get to, I guess, kind of decide on design, but I guess bid out the whole package. So, I, and, I guess and, I'm not quite sure because I'm not familiar with the terminology. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I'm built my own house. Right. So, right. Okay. So, design bid is where you you would you know, hire. Uh, contractor to in essence work through the design process with you. Yeah. And then they build it. Yeah. Okay. Versus you hiring professionals to put together a design package. And then that package is bid to various contractors. You're bringing a contractor in on the, the front end. But it, okay. essentially project manager. Yeah. Yeah. Um well What's your... let me let me ask you a question right before you, you ask yeah. Um, with the, the designs that you've shown us, how much distance do we have from point A to point B on? We have a building design that we like. How do we get it to the next step? Well, the, the next step, other than the, than the design build process, because you're really relying on the contractor then to, to stipulate. I mean, they're going to work with you and, and right. stipulate what um, what's going to go into it. But, you know, you're locked into them kind of and their pricing. You're not competitively pricing it. Um, Whereas if your next step otherwise in the typical design and then bid process, you, you would you know hire an architect, an engineer, you get a design team together and outside of bid. Outside yeah. of bid. So yeah. you're 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 paying for professional services to get you plans and specifications that would then be competitively bid. Right. That Honestly, that makes more sense to me. What are your, what are your thoughts? And, and I, I think it does too, because yeah. you have the control then over the design as you're going through it, and you're not relying on a contractor providing you a design. He may provide That's you the, build, the yeah. basic yeah. building and what have you, right. but then he still has to hire um, professionals to prepare plans for building permit or uh, here maybe you know 
land development or what have you. So, you know, I think, I think you, you might, a good way to go about this is either bring in an architect, try and work on getting the building plans done. Okay. And once the building plan's done, we, if, if you're, if you want to use this property here, which yeah, I think it's makes it's sense, right. yeah. either where this building is sitting or overall, you know, we work towards trying to get a building that'll fit on this site here, assuming the demolition or, you know, something across the street here uh, and utilizing some of that land there. But I think it's, you know, working through the true design phase now um, and, and engaging an architect. I mean, we, you know, I can help you so far as, you know, the mechanical, the electrical, plumbing design, the engineering for the building, we can do that. The architects don't do that. The architects are going to work with you with the layout, the look of the building, uh, basic construction, you know, you know, your goals and help program the space for what you need. Um, and that's very beneficial. Okay. So the architect then and the MEP engineers, uh, plus a structural engineer mm -hmm. would complete plans for the design of the building. And then in conjunction with that, we would want to do a site plan and a land development plan for where the building is going to be positioned, you know, what kind of improvements outside of the building, parking lot, mm -hmm. uh, any other structures, salt shed, garages, those types of the things. Park. And that all gets yeah. put into the package then that is put out on the street for bidding. Mm -hmm. And 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 so after attending the grant workshop, there's also grants for planning too. Mm -hmm. So again, our, our biggest problem is money. It's cost. Yes. And um, that's where I'm kind of like stuck. So if there's grants for planning, I think our next step would be we'll find out what we need to start submitting for. Yeah. Plant the grants for planning. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear, and I'm sorry I couldn't it's, make it that day because I wanted to join you because it's 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 good information and know yeah. what money's coming out. There's a lot of it coming out. Yeah. Most of the one programs I've seen now, they will pay for you know soft costs, the engineering, legal, what have you, um, and they'll pay for construction, but only after the grant is awarded. Mm -hmm. So you go into them with a concept plan mm -hmm. and a cost estimate. And we don't have enough information right now right. to do an accurate cost estimate to make sure we're covering what ultimately you're going to get. I mean, yeah. we, have, we have a rough idea of the square footage that you need and the general layout of a building. You know, we still, last month I gave you a, a concept plan for putting the building on this property. Mm -hmm. And whether that works or not, we really hadn't had any dialogue about that. Mm -hmm. um, we need more my suggestion would be you know, certainly you could bring in a, a construction contractor for some guidance, but I typically think it might be better to just engage an architect, get a proposal from an architect, and I can help you with that, um, and you know, get them here, find, you know, they're going to, you know, figure out what your needs are, what your program is going to be for this building, the use of the building, and then we work towards getting, you know, some kind of concept plan going. At that point, we can do some cost estimates, and then maybe at that stage, then you go to the grants. Um, but you're not, you don't have a final design yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, my, again, that's my biggest concern is, is, is costs and payment, because after the meeting with the DDP, you know, it's just... Yeah. What's what's going to well, happen? Much much like the conversation yeah. with the DEP, if we don't yeah. have the money, we can't. Right, we can't do it, yeah. and this place is full. I know. You know, it's going to. Um, I can also, and I think I promised this last time. I can send you. Did I send you a contact for a grant writer? I know. Where where she's typically engaged mm -hmm. with your project and mine to identify grants, grant potentials, mm -hmm. and then advise you on what the grant requirements are. Mm -hmm and assist with preparing a grant application. So she's gonna need a lot of information on what, you know, at least a concept plan yeah. on what you're looking yeah. for yeah. Yeah. and at least some rough cost estimate. And that's where an architect would come in right now. I, mean, I can help you on the site side, but I can't help you on the build. I mean, to some degree on the yeah. building side, but I think you, you really do need to engage in do the architect. Do you have an architect you can refer us to? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think the, the homework for you, Chuck, would then be if you give us the name of the, the grant writer and the name of the architects, our our takeaway on that is we'll talk to the architects, hammer that out. Oh, look at that. Um, He's so and, uh, 
I've, yeah. I've been, yeah. I'm working so with him on another municipal building. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. because piecemealing this together is just it's tough. It's yeah. it's a lot. I mean, and you don't know which way to turn, which right. way to go. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I I my husband and I built our first house ourselves, and, and everything worked out beautifully. But that was all that I had to do. I mean, I had some great job, and I had contractors lined up, and this became this time. Boom, 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 and it was great. And I know this can save ourselves a lot of money. This is this. I've never done this for a municipal building. Oh, like, it gets in the. Right. You know, you really have to have. You know, right. a design that's code compliant. Right. You know, you're getting a building permit. Right. Uh, and yourself I'm, not and that's I'm just, I'm not here. Right. Yeah. And, and it's a lot. It's, it's not yeah. his responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's, yeah. So. So yeah, I think next steps, talk to the architects, talk to the ground writer and see where, see where things sit. Okay. Okay. Moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is the complaint from the residents of 3955 in Pierceville Road at the corner of Stouchburg and Wintersville. Uh, they've been complaining about tractor trailers going through their yard. Uh, engineer Hess and I spoke and he suggested that we start by installing some flexible uh, post delineators, uh, followed by concrete barriers, curbing, and guide rails if that doesn't work. Um, I relayed that over to the, the homeowner and they were appreciative of that. I didn't get a, a huge amount of feedback, but they expressed their gratitude. So what I would like to do, and I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize me to purchase 12 of the stake in flexible post delineators from MSI. Second. When you... <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Chuck. Um, when you go to purchase them, there, there is a driver, I believe, that they sell, like a slide hammer. Okay. So you hammer in the base, and then the flexible delineator goes in. Okay. So just ask them for the I'll, I'll ask any tools it. or installation instructions that would help you. I think, too, what I had given you before was getting the red color yeah. uh, versus the white. Yeah. Um, Be more visible. It's a lot more visible. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, certainly I can help with Butch laying them out where we're going to position them um, out in the field. We can, you know, take some paint marks and, and mark them uh, because we should do a PA one call to make sure there's not any utilities there that we don't uh, sever a very expensive fiber optic line or something curried. Even though they don't go that deep, our yeah, luck would be we would hit one. No, so it's any anytime you jam something into the ground, we we learned that with the sign, the speed sign up there is you always do the PA one call because you never know where a gas line's going to be. Yeah. We discussed putting some signs over there. I mean, there we already signs. there already there's there's stop signs because that was one of the things that I did the first or second year that I was here. There's stop signs and there's no like there's we the, we restricted turn turn, turn, turn turn traffic turn for anything signs. other than class two. They're just ignoring the signage. You can't put a camera there. No. I mean, we could we, we could probably put well, a camera there, but there's nothing we can do, do with, it. with it. They asked the police officer if he had. It. A, photo of a truck making that illegal turn, would that be enough for you to go and issue a citation? If we had the uh, information to get the device the right or the complete. Right. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, we could we could try putting trail cam up, but the concern is that you might get a picture of like the truck and the driver, but not like the license. Right. You need the license plate like, and all that. You need a lot. So short of sitting there and being able to observe it, you probably aren't going to be able to get what well, you need. You just program, yeah. program it. Take, yeah. Take a shot for yeah. In it. Yeah. I mean, the but, homeowner owner may be able to observe it too and well, take so a photo. With, with the homeowners, this happens a lot while they're at work. So, uh-huh. like, they'll they'll leave, it'll be fine, and they'll come home, and there's just giant yeah, ruts in their lawn. Yeah. So. How do, these, how do these drivers know when they're away? Yeah, just sheer dumb luck, I guess. But sure. I think the, the posts will, will should help. And if somebody is actually brazen enough to, to mow down a bunch of bright red bollards, then we, we up the ante. We go to that traffic island. And if somebody is still stupid enough to do it, that's when we put up the Jersey barriers. Why don't yeah. we just put some big rocks in <laughs> <laughs> uh, That would you could as long as they're outside the right, right away. Once you're outside yeah. the right away, they've already drunk. Yeah, they've already, yeah, as I said, they've already gone through the yard. So I'll, I'll get them ordered this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're fine with it. Um, I sent them pictures of what we were proposing and they're, they're good. Um, 
So we already covered the grant workshop that was hosted by State Representative Barry Joswiak. Uh, this was facilitated by the PADCED. Uh, Irene was in attendance. Yeah, but then again, she yeah, yeah, it's, she it's, used it's me as an example. Group. When I started throwing things out, and she's like, "The more ideas you have, the better it is, and you know, the more you can articulate." And so, good. Yeah, good. I'm glad one of us was able to be there. Yeah, I yeah. Get off of work that good. day. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is the Weiss annexation sketch plan. Uh, they'd like to take land from 704 Marion Drive and add it to 720 Marion Drive to make the lot approximately one acre. Uh, this is to allow for room for future, accept, future septic system replacements if needed. Both properties are owned by Jacob Weiss. The Planning Commission has reviewed this and recommended the approval of a plan at their meeting on April 18th. Uh, it is subject to condition, though, upon SDE's initial review uh, comments and uh, BCV, BCPC reviewed and had no concerns. Um, Chuck, so unless you have problems yeah. with that, it would be up for us to approve and then sign. Yeah, I had done a follow-up review after the Planning Commission meeting. They had made all the necessary revisions. The letter was dated May 10th. Um, we were down to really you know, signing the certificates um, uh, on the plan. That includes the board. Um, the Berks County Planning Commission, yeah, the, the comments, there they're advisory at best. It's kind of interesting. The, the, the one property seems to have some historical um, significance, but not that that's any, any mm. particular problem. Um, and then of course, getting the plan recorded, I did recommend that the uh, applicant provide draft copies of the deed uh, for the two new lots because there is an agricultural use notification, basically in any future owners that you're, you're living next to agricultural areas and you may be subject to dust, smells, odors, things of that nature commonly um, associated with agricultural activity. Just to try and avoid people calling and complaining about a farmer doing what a farmer needs to do. Um, so I would, again, the plans are here. I think you could sign the plans. Um, I have not seen those draft deeds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if the board takes action to approve the plan and signs the plan, I would simply ask for uh, the township to hold on to them and not return them to the applicant for recording until we see the, the draft deed for the resultant two new lots, well not two new lots, but revised lots, um, to make sure that that ag nuisance disclaimer is in there. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve and sign the yeah. plans yeah. for the Weiss so I, annexation sketch. I would make it conditional upon satisfying the yeah, outstanding administrative uh, review comments uh, in the May 10th, 2023 SDI letter. Okay. Can you snap that in? Okay, thank you. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. So we'll ask you before you leave tonight, perhaps we can get the signatures on the plan. You'll have to get the planning plan commission. Machine. Yeah, because they didn't sign anything. No, yet. no. no we've got them after the Yeah, I'll, I'll get it after the meeting. Okay, next is the Alden on 6th sketch plan. Um, Chuck, this is also in, in your wheelhouse, too. You had comments. Um, yeah, I think I provided them to you last month. Nothing's new. Nothing's new. Uh, the applicant, okay. I believe, is working towards the, you know, a preliminary subdivision land development plan. I think the biggest thing on that project moving forward is coming to terms with the intermunicipal agreement with Wormelsdorf Borough for sewer treatment uh, because this will have... Uh, public sewer, it needs to have public sewer. There are smaller lots, you know, higher density, single family homes, but nonetheless, that sewer is the key component. Yep. Um, I had another thought, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Do you know that Heidelberg Township gets their mail delivered through Rabazonia and Wilmersdorf? <laughs> Marion Township gets their mail delivered through Wilmersdorf? Oh boy, so, so yeah. Uh, yeah, just one yeah. more thing. Oh, that's an interesting yeah. idea. Yeah. How, how, you know, that we'll have to, uh, Get the post office on board for uh, delivery of mail. I think yeah, I was say, can we can we annex that? Is that <laughs> an annexation? <laughs> Show up with you, uh, you want to take on that part of the <laughs> bird or strongly you give it up letters your letters portion? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I would recommend that because this is going to generate some tax revenue yeah, for the yeah. For yeah. The yeah. yeah. 
You pick up the burden of providing I, public services, but you know the tax revenue is there, and every time the property you know, it's, it's sold. Yeah, right. Not not to mention Heidelberg doesn't have sewer service there, which is why they were looking to go through us. So they'd be kind of out of luck. Is that good sticking yeah. to blue? Yeah. Okay, next up is the liquid fuels audit. Uh, I'm going to turn yeah. it over to Irene for that. There's no problems with the liquid fuels audit. I don't know if you guys read it to get your fall asleep at night or something, but uh, we were a little bit late in receiving the funds because I couldn't log into the, uh, the program that we have to use, and that took several weeks to get that straightened out. So that was the only comment that, that Mr. Stoppy had for us, like, why was why did you receive the funds so late? I said because I couldn't log in. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was it. Other than that, there's no issues. Okay. Next item is the Berks County Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, if we would like to remain in the program, we simply do nothing. If we want to be excluded from the program, a letter must be sent. If we remain in the county's program, we would be ineligible to apply for funds from the PA uh, Community Development Block grant program as administered by the DCED. Thank you. Um, I think in, in prior years, we discussed this at length and it, it's, it makes more sense for us to stay in the Berks County one rather than the PA one, just by, based on the opportunities that are usually present for that. So um, unless everybody has a strong opinion or uh, some knowledge of something that I'm not aware of, I say we, we stay the course and stay with the Berks one. I didn't realize there was a Pennsylvania community development block. Yeah, like I, I thought each county had their own program. Yeah. I did not realize there was a statewide. One. There's a state one, and when and this is going back probably three or four years at this point, when we looked at it, there were more opportunities that would be possible for us to participate in at the county level than there were at the state. I yeah yeah I, I'm not, I wasn't even aware of the state level. Of that. Yeah. Um, of course, the, the main qualifier is your project area has to be in a low mm -hmm. income demographic area yeah which that that which unfortunately program... most of the time was not us but really okay yeah all right there's very few opportunities but there were more when we when we did kind of an apples to apples comparison of it there was a lot more at the county level that were either things that we would be interested in but weren't necessarily fully eligible for or things that we were eligible for so um, with that said i'm in favor of taking no action no action there we, there we have it. Um, Do we have the motion on that? Uh, no. I, I, no. So we don't no, have the motion. We're no. not doing anything. Um, <laughs> motion to do nothing. Uh, <laughs> next up is the Marlin and Wilma Martin letter of credit. This is for awareness it's only. It was auto increased from twenty six thousand four hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty six cents to twenty six thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars and sixty five cents. Um, okay. Next is the 663 Canal Road property maintenance issue. This is a building that is owned by AT&T. Um, it's the building that's sitting there, not the actual property itself that's in disrepair. Craft Municipal Group has issued several notice of violations that have been undeliverable. Property owner has contacted an attorney. Craft would like to know how to proceed, um, possibly issuing a de demolition order. Uh, but they're really not sure where to send it. And that's why I put it on the agenda because they need direction. But yeah, so I mean, the only thing it's it's AT and T, so like somebody should be able to figure out. Well, like, we I think they even I sent know. one to their corporate office. Yeah. Text that it came uh, back. Well, I'm I'm not shocked by that. Dealing, yeah. I, I deal with AT and T yeah. at work sometimes, and if you don't go to the right person, it's a, a swirling vortex. How do you, how do you figure out? Who yeah. Sure? So. I mean, if we if we yeah, issued a demolition yeah. order, we obviously don't want to knock it down. Yeah. If we knock it down, we're going to take out like phone service in the area. No, we think it's I I don't know if that's true or not. Well, the roof is caving in, but there might be telco equipment in there. We don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, we have no idea. So before we go and like bulldoze it or something, it might not be a bad idea to issue a demolition order. Or what I was thinking is, can we ask Kraft if we can like fix it and then bill AT and T? Yeah, but well, you still need you still need consent. The consent order. To, well, yeah. some type of uh, consent or warrant to enter the property. I mean, at this point, we've sent numerous notices of violation. But the next step be like we take them to court. But if there, nobody shows up to court, then we give them a fine. Nobody pays the fine. Well, like people said that the, the property owner. Should have some kind of an easement or lease, yeah, yeah. But he, 
he doesn't know anything about it because he bought the property a few years ago. He wasn't getting it. I'm here. That should be something recorded. Yeah. But I mean, that's you're, 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 you're... Can't you look that up at the courthouse? Well, not not all leases are recorded. Um, I would think one with AT and T should. Be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. For a for a building, yeah. If I owned the property, I'd tear it down. Yeah, I, don't care the property, if there was I think, the, I think the property will well, has the responsibility. Yeah. Paul, if you need a back on that, I will. <laughs> I will. I will talk to the person Good. that I deal with. Yeah. Well, but you're enforcing the property. You're, 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 property. you're enforcing codes. Code. I'll I'll call the person that I deal with at AT and T and see if they can give me kind of an inroad to somebody that deals with because I, I do wireless stuff and you they might be able to give me somebody that does wireline. I mean, if I won't turn down any help I can get, but I'll see if I can get kind of my, my foot in the door already and see if they can shut me around internally for who would. But I wonder if, if the lease expired. Right? So oh. at t has no obligation. I mean, that's, that's, that's why all the money goes back to the property. Right? That's a possibility, but at that point, if the lease is expired and somebody from at t can say, yeah, we don't, we don't care one way or the other, then right. we tell the property owner to get a demolition well, permit and go nuts. I've, I've seen that happen before where the utility company builds a antenna or a radio tower on the property that they lease from the owner for 10, 15, 20 years, and then it's no longer it's operable. Up. Yeah, and they and they Man, walk away sure. and they walk yeah. away from it. Right. becomes somebody else. So it becomes the property owner's issue. Mm -hmm. So it's to me, it would seem you've been sending AT and T. It's time to notify. Yeah, the it's been notified. He's yeah. been notified. Okay, and so he's not following through with repairs or demolition. But it's not. Yes. If the building isn't owned by you, yeah. the, the oh, building doesn't. Yeah, well, if we want to go right. B and E, we can do he, that. Joe. How do you buy a property and you don't know somebody else owns the building? You don't even know he, that he owned the land. I got a couple bridges I could sell some place. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. It's crazy. Or should I do more? Or Carl, do you want to? Uh, I'm a guest. I mean, I've been getting myself in a lot of trouble, but I would tell you. Let that lock off the door. See if there's anything in there. I mean, let's, let's put it this way: if we if we issue a demolition order, right, and they don't comply with it, what's our next step? Can we just can we have say a homeowner go ahead and do whatever you want with it, lock it down? Well, the, I think the, the township, township, the township would probably would be, have to. would be empowered to do yeah. that and build a and build a property owner. I'd rather have the I, I mean, do it. Yeah, I think I'd rather I'd is, rather not build the property. Is the property open, open no. knocking down? I, I don't know. Well, there's a big hole in the roof. Well, I mean, there's a there's a huge hole in the roof. But and this this is again, it's like stone Park, where it's a it's a deal, a private deal between AT and T and this property. And unfortunately, the townships here trying to enforce its property maintenance code because yeah. you have a hazardous condition with that dilapidated building. Mm -hmm. So, to me. You know, <laughs> Under the under the no, under the build under the property maintenance code in the building code, the, 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 the township has the authority right. to enter the property and address the hazardous John's John. situation John's John. if the property owner refuses. But the property owner hasn't even been served notice about the need to demolish this because he thinks someone else owns it. He doesn't even know. How big is this home? Yeah. We fly okay, the, the, so, the building. We fly the township train over. Look, that's the other thing. I would say the baby. Let me guess. How do we? How do we? How do we? How do we know who owns the building? Right. How do we that's, know that? Because AT and T is on the side of the building. No, I think it's like the tax assessment map. Well, the tax, the tax assessment map is not always accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 could that could be an easement or a lease. An easement. An easement. Yeah. yeah, one of the two. But I mean, I never heard of splitting up the tax bill either. Sure. Do they pay tax? Yeah. Yeah. One entity pays uh, the building tax. Assessment. Sure. And the other one pays the property tax. 
Do they split up tax bills like that? Yeah. All right. I never heard of it. Let, let me, let me, bills, so so look at, if you can look at it, I'll, I'll do a little bit of snooping. Right. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So Colin's going to do a little bit of homework. I'm going to do a little, little bit of sleuthing. We'll, we'll circle back to this next month, hopefully with an answer. Um, Next is the MTCA solar message board. The MTCA would like us to uh, reimburse the cost of the two solar message boards that were used for the car show. Uh, this was rented from United Rentals for a total price of $896.22. Uh, that's well within the budget that we have for the community programs and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to approve the reimbursement of the United Rentals sign rental of a cost of $896.22. Well, they, they already paid for it. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys, you guys got it. They sent the, did they send the bill directly to us or did they proxy it through you guys? Okay. Okay. So I will amend that. We will, I'll like, I'd like to make a motion to pay the cost of $896 and 22 cents for the sign rented from United Rentals for the MTCA car show. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Nice car show, by the way. Yeah, we had a yeah, really good turnout. Do you have? I was a little disappointed. I was working. Did you um? Do you, do you do you have the the numbers? Like, because last I left off, we had over 140 cars. 149. We had 149 cars show up to be in the show. So it was a it was a lovely day. It was not too sunny. It, it held off on raining. Yeah. Great turnout. The food was was really good. I couldn't get the so. wines. That's see, I'm I'm glad I went early. I went at like ten thirty and I got a brisket sandwich and that was good. So yeah. <laughs> so moving right along, stormwater management ordinance fees and schedule update. We're gonna table that until next month because that's gonna take a huge amount of time to go through. Um, no, I wanna I, 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 I wanna do this. It's very confusing and I think we do need to we need to do it at a workshop, yeah. but Yes, we, we lost the workshop this past month. Um, uh, next is uh, we're going to be going into a, an executive session after the meeting to discuss uh, some litigation matters uh, around, what was that? Oh. During, during the meeting in case we can take action. So we, oh, 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 okay, us. okay. So like, we won't adjourn the meeting, but we're going we're gonna to ask recess. everybody politely to, to leave while we recess. But seeing as it's 9.15, I don't think anybody's coming back, right? No. Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we will be having an intermission for executive session, uh, and then we'll discuss a little bit about the, the Bollinger Road fill overflow. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the, the Zoom recording. In the meeting at 9.53 p.m. Okay. So uh, we went to executive session at what time, Sue? Uh, 9.15. 9.15, and we reconvened at 9.53. Uh, the items for discussion have led to, uh, we're going to take a couple of actions. The first one is to authorize uh, the solicitor to prepare an agreement around the, uh, the necessary steps and uh, the obtaining of permits. With the, with the property owner and joining municipality to the extent that they agree to be jointly liable with Marion Township. Okay. So you got that, Sue? Sure. Do you have that okay. I have that on, yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't hear it. Okay, and then that's so, that's the motion on the table. Who's right. making the motion? Uh, I am. Peter. Second. Okay. Irene, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, and the second motion is to have, uh, is to authorize Chuck to take the, the necessary steps to obtain whatever necessary permits are required as part of the remediation. You're making the motion? I'm making the motion. Second. second. Irene, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, that is directly related to the last item on the agenda, the Bollinger Road fill overflow matter. Uh, there was a situation where some fill was placed along a roadway to bolster a, uh, a very steep shoulder. Some of that fill made its way outside of the, the right-of-way, and uh, we're working with Jackson Township to remediate that at the property owner's behest. Um, that concludes the items on the agenda. Uh, I'll give you a real quick summary of the police report for the matter of the record. Uh, there were 737 miles patrolled over the course of 60 hours. Um, 
and uh, really not much else. There were 19 traffic stops and 13 citations. Um, no parking tickets and uh, 24 security checks. So all in all, it was a active month for traffic stops, but otherwise uneventful. Um, the only other thing I have is to uh, mention the Community Association Carso was a, a huge success. There's a couple of small takeaway items for lessons learned for next year, but it was it was smooth. It was pretty much on rails at this point that we, we got it set up, we let it go, and it kind of did its thing. So looking forward to doing the, doing the next one next year because it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? No, thank you. Okay, Jim. No, thank you. Okay, Chuck. <laughs> You know, I have to have something to say. Um, just wanted to ask you procedurally. So we're getting a bunch of these small stormwater projects coming in. Mm -hmm. And Sue and I were debating, uh, you know, in the past, I believe the Planning Commission has reviewed those mm -hmm. and provided a recommendation for it. it you know, and, it, and that's, that's a fine process. We can continue with that. But, you know, these people are coming in with sheds and, and building additions and so forth. And it, it, it takes too much time to begin with. I'm just concerned about hitting planning commission meetings and board of supervisors meetings. Would this be that little like packet, the self-prepared packet? Well, that that's, talked about? that's, we're leading to that. Okay. But right now we we're, we're directing, we're directing um, property owners to, to have an, an engineer help them with mm -hmm. preparing what's required under the ordinance when you get the exemption from rate control. Yeah. You still have to do some stormwater but you don't have to build as big a facility or as intensive of a, of a facility. So the, there, there's also follow-up questions to that then too. You know, when these facilities, stormwater facilities are going in, I feel there should be an operation and maintenance agreement that gets recorded that the owner, today owner, maintains it. That be, being recorded also ensures somebody 10 years from now knows it's a stormwater facility and they they shouldn't monkey with it. So okay. we are going to be getting agreements from these folks. We're looking at a more of a standard agreement, fill in the blank and not necessarily a custom agreement. So we avoid yep. additional legal costs for okay. these folks. Um, and then the question of financial security, which I think you were mentioning in the standard agreement, there's something in there about the completion. I didn't get a chance to look at that. Um, isn't that what you told me? That there's something in the, well, in the agreement that they're they're required to complete it, you know, to avoid the establishment of financial security and all that. Um, but we got to have some reassurance that these folks are going to actually build these facilities or complete the facilities. Mm -hmm. You know, not start it, get it halfway done, and then give up or something. Right. The, so you can either ask for financial security to ensure their completion and use the and use the money. To do it if they don't right or you can have the agreement provide you know property owner you must complete this work otherwise the township has the ability to enter the property do the work and bill you for it does the standard agreement have that type of language in it i'm sure it does i haven't i, have, I gotta sure look it at does. it okay but the the, the if we want to implement the agreement for even these properties that don't require you know stormwater plans because they're exempt from the drain the well they're they're required to address stormwater by a plan and the ordinance uses drainage plan and then it uses stormwater plan which is inter interact interchangeable in my opinion um so if the agreement's recorded i i would also like to see some sort of plan attached to it as an exhibit that could be recorded you tell me if that's feasible or not even if well, it's can they 11 by 17? Well, the, 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 but the isn't the purpose of that section 402 to um, excuse a property owner from submitting a plan if they're no need an exemption? No, it only excludes them from rate control. And then there's three other criteria they have to address but, and provide stormwater. Okay, because I, I, I thought the it's very confusing. I thought the written. stormwater amendment that we enacted last year excused property owners who met certain exemptions. Well, no, was, we just changed the criteria. We, we upped the criteria. Yeah, as I said, I think- But you what, still got to hit, and we can talk tomorrow. So what, what, I think what you're thinking of is we, we changed it so that- You have the leeway. Things under a certain threshold, like that that individual with the- uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Or whatever it was. 
that they're now yeah. under that. So they didn't have to go through those hoops. So yeah. they didn't really right. carte blanche change much other than we raised yeah. the bar, yeah. so to speak. Okay. Because <laughs> my only concern was whether we had to amend the stormwater ordinance to make these property owners sign agreements based upon the language in 702 as it's currently right. But I think 702 applies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is no. Okay. So again, back to your druthers here on the processing of these plans. Do you feel they should get, you know, stormwater is really not a planning issue per se. It's an improvement to address. Well, like the little shed things never went to planning commission. Well, and I'll, any kind of waivers went to Sure, there's a waiver of if they're not meeting some criteria. Right, but I don't also, I don't think the law allows the township to deny one of these plans any, anyway through a review, review process. Mm. Typically, mm. what I see is that these are permit applications that are correct reviewed internally by the township engineer yes. and either approved or denied. There, mm. There's no there is no planning review process for right. non-land development or subdivision right. plans. There's no, there's so no these single, like, like for instance, a single family home is not land development as right. the planning code defines it. Right. right. The planning code defines land development as two or more resident, two or, more. Two or yeah. more residences or a commercial industrial building. Yep. Not a single family home or a shed. Or an addition. Or an addition. Right. Those are just the per permanent permanent question. Their permit and building code reviews that are done internally, so not really, at a public through a public meeting. Yeah. So we could even circumvent the board of supervisors then in that case. Because well, in other municipalities, my office, yeah. we do issue per stormwater permits for these types of things. So that kind of gives the, the homeowner a permit and you know it's just I mean, whether you I think you're a, you're I think you're you're vested with that power as the township engineer under the applicable building codes right. but to the extent that the board wants to, whether wants they to, want to retain to yeah. retain right. final approval yep. of a permit no oh, right. that's fine, that's yeah. fine I, too. I think and stop me if i'm speaking out of turn here but our, our general premise is if there doesn't need to be that link in the chain let's take the link out of the chain <laughs> and if there's something that removes us from the equation I think that's beneficial because it removes not that we have a situation where we're, we're being like retaliatory or anything like that but but by putting it to a neutral third party we don't have a situation where somebody comes on the board and is like yeah that gym guy wants a swimming pool i'm not i'm not going right. to ever approve right. this you take that sort of conflict essentially out of the equation by by giving it to a third party so. and but but to the extent that specific legal or engineering issues arise with a plan that's not subject to land development or review, then obviously yeah, we yeah. would be more heavily involved. Yes, definitely. Like just one off the top of my head is, you know, I represent another municipality in Northern Berks County where this property owner was proposing to build a single family home on a flag lot, but the site distance visibility wasn't satisfied. Right. So I need to get involved because a permit couldn't be issued for the driveway unless this guy got, got easements mm -hmm. from his neighbors. So I was actively involved in that process, even though it wasn't land development. Right. Sure. So if there's any deviation from the ordinance, then I think we would have to come here for waivers through the board supervisor. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, any, anything that's a waiver would yes. come through yes. planning commission, supervisors, et cetera. Okay. But if any submission and that, That's what okay. it is now. Yeah. Okay, good. Right, because the planning, the planning commission can render a recommendation on that. Okay. Otherwise, it's sort of the envelope of the process. It's just engineering. again not right. something I typically see, but yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any. And it's it. very similar to the building permit process mm -hmm. in that regard. You know, you're not act, taking action on no. building permits. Right. That's all being done, you know, just as a matter of fact here right. through right. the delegation of that that authority. So, right. not tonight, but I do want to go down the avenue of the little. The self help packet as much as we yes, can. I do too. To do I do too. Yeah. And and maybe what I'll do is um, get some examples to Colin mm -hmm. so he can take a look at it and see what kind of ordinance amendment is put with the yeah. cool. I think that would be a good step in the right direction. I think so too. I, I really struggle. You know, people call, and what happens is craft code will send in, hey, we got this and that. And if it's under 500 square feet, which is why I asked for that threshold, we're good to go. When it's over five, I say, well, they're over the 500, depending on 
if they meet the exemption criteria, at least they might get an exemption from rate control. Then the owner calls. What do I need to do to, to address stormwater management? Well, the ordinance says you have to do this. I highly recommend you hire a consultant to assist you with it. And then that process mm -hmm. starts, mm -hmm. which, you know, in some regard, I don't like that because it's very, it, it's costly for somebody. You know, to hire an engineer. If we can adopt this small projects process, what we'll do is we'll cover from, from zero to 500, you're not doing anything. From 501 foot up to 2000 or something, or, or, or within the exemption criteria, you'll be doing the small projects. And if you don't meet the exemption criteria, now you're just doing a full storm water management. Okay. Which I think is going to really help the residents. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all for it, and I am too, because I hate yeah, bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but simpler, but simpler is better. We don't it is, that. and but you know, at the same token, cumulatively, you you have to start, and your ordinance requires it. You have to make you know get everybody has to do something. Yeah, you know, at least there's stages here. Yeah. Okay. And that, that wasn't Marion Township's choice. That was the DEP's choice through the EPA and Chesapeake Bay and all those fun things that are saving the world. Anything else, Chuck? No, I've okay. taken up enough of your time. No, no, thank Colin. you. I, I apologize, but I do have a topic. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. So I wanted to quickly give the board an update on what's happening with the code enforcement matter of 1127 William Penn Boulevard, which is the DICE, pro the DICE, the DICE property that has junk and debris on the curtilage and backyard of the property. Um, I will say that the DICE's have made substantial progress over the last six months in cleaning their property. However, they continue to have junk, debris, rusted metal, uh, I think unlicensed, unregistered vehicles at the property in violation of the property maintenance code. The issue, however, is that our local magistrate refuses to do her job and enforce the law, quite, quite frankly. Um, as the board knows, this matter was instituted uh, late last summer with a hearing date originally scheduled for October. Um, that date has been continued five or six times. A few of them admittedly have been with my, with my consent because Jeff Hogue and I go to these hearings. He gives me an update. I look at the pictures that he took that day or the day before and, I'm, and I say, you know what? This does look better than it, than it did, you know, six weeks ago. Okay. But there comes a point when the patient runs out and frankly, again, our local magistrate is not willing to enforce the law. And so if she's not willing to enforce the law by issuing fines against this property owner for not complying with our local law, well, then we do have another option. That option is to go get an injunction before the court of common pleas, right? Because there are, there are two ways to enforce code matters in a township, right? You, you go with the deterrence route, which is the magistrate issues fines and hopefully the property owner resolves that issue because he or she doesn't want to incur more fines, okay? The other route is to go to court of common pleas and file for an injunction, which says that property owner, you must remove that junk, you must comply with the ordinance Otherwise, either the township can do so at your cost, or uh, you can be held in contempt. So those are the two options we have. Option one is not work is not working, mm. um, in, in part because of the the, the magistrate. <laughs> she refused to hear that today. Well, so the the purported excuse given by opposing counsel is that his car broke down in the city of Reading. I, quite frankly, find that hard to believe. It is frustrating because this matter was finally like, finally scheduled for a hearing two, 
two months ago, okay, in late March or early April. And again, remember that this was instituted in October, okay? So Mr. Dice attends the hearings and tells the judge that he wants counsel involved, even though he knew for 45 days that March XX 2023 was the date scheduled for the hearing, okay? The judge could have said, no, you've had 45 days to retain counsel since I last continued this matter. She agreed to continue it again until April, okay? We get to the hearing in April, and he did make some progress, and we did kind of reach an agreement, and that agreement, agreement was he would fully address all the issues and come into compliance with today's date, and he would also provide receipts for garage doors. Now, of course, none of that happened because the judge is simply willing to say, oh, well, his counsel's not here, so we're going to continue this again. It's, it's a little appalling. Um, and what's, again, again what's, what's frustrating is that the board is spending taxpayer dollars on a matter that's not being enforced. The board has, pro and the township has probably spent three or four grand for me to go back and forth to these hearings every month that never happen. The half, half hour there, I spend 20 minutes at the court, the half hour back. I mean, yeah. $300, $400 every single time that the hearing is rescheduled and we're not even prosecuting the case. So I can do the exact same thing. I think, I think it's time. I, I, I can do the exact same. I can spend the exact same amount of money and go to the court of common pleas and be in front of a judge who's actually willing to enforce the law. I, I guess how's that? Fair? He files an injunction. No, 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 after that, after yeah. the injunction, let's say everything goes well, the injunction's filed. So if he doesn't comply with it, he's either held in contempt, right, or we have the authority to go in, clean it up, and build. Now, who goes in and cleans up? You hire. We hire somebody. somebody. We don't put somebody at. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't put somebody like Butch in harm's way. No, no, no. But, but yeah. actually, like, how how does that it's happen? time? It's how time to go over the books. Oh, this is what Jeez. they get paid for. So there's companies that do that. I'm sure there's companies that repossess cars. The chief of the public and the Democrat. Uh, uh, judges, judges are always cross filed. I haven't checked this. Yeah, I think she cross out. Did she win both sides? I think so. I mean, it's 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 the, it's the major right. cross filing. Well, then it's time for one of us to go to the newspapers. I know I'll, I'm on the main. Page. I wouldn't. But I I told everybody in Stonecroft don't vote. And I tell you why. You know why? I said because they, she keeps continuing this case that you're all bitching at me about this property element. I mean, fund, 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 fundamentally. The state of his property is not fair to the neighbors. Right. And, and and I can't even put that in front of the court. I can't even put that statement in front of the court. I mean, my, people that drive by there every day call me on the phone and say, what are you doing about this mm, problem? We get, we get calls. And I have to keep telling them, hey, it's been, it's it's been, been before the, the court for a year. Right. She yeah. just keeps continuing with it. My suggestion yeah, yeah. is don't go for it. And, 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 and the, the, yeah. the judge is so lenient that he has he has no reason to actually to, to actually comply with the law. There, there, there's no deterrence. There's no you know kick in the pants for him to comply with the law. And I think he is. Is that her regular? Is she notorious for that, or I, is it just this case? I I don't know. I guess you know. I, yes, I wants to go file the injunction. Oh, I think the injunction I, yeah. really I saw I saw something at the court today which I didn't like, and that raised some eyebrows. All right, so, so I guess it's time to take further So so we need we need to authorize so, so, to file the injunction. Well, yeah. So. I would request that the board make a motion authorizing my preparation and filing of a complaint for injunctive relief against 1127 William Penn Boulevard. 1117. 1117 William Penn Boulevard to the extent that this issue is not resolved at the next hearing in early June. If, if you're okay with it, Sue, I'm gonna. Yeah, do we have to amend the agenda? We're not. I mean, we're not authorized um, to be uh, any, Well, do we? That, no, that's that's a good point. Yeah. And I forgot to say this. Yeah. Take that act. Take that action at your next workshop. Okay. So, okay. Okay. so there's another. Okay. 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 Okay.
There will be another another three step. So if it doesn't happen then, then you go. I uh, yeah, I think everyone knows who this property because I, I wanna I wanna um I want council to be there and I want to ask for the receipt for the garage door. And I want I want our code enforcement officer, Jeff Ho, to give me one more set of pictures. And if they're not, if they're not, you know, if they're not compliant with the law. Let me know the day and I'll definitely be good to witness that whole action. Okay. And so then, we'll, and we'll authorize that. I'll, the, I'll the instruct my wife to have the bail money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you count on her though? Uh, maybe not. Call one of us. And, and call I one can of guarantee us. Well, as, also, as a broad sweeping policy, to the extent you have other significant significant code enforcement issues, I'm almost just inclined to say go to the court of common pleas at this point. Right. Well, I I don't I don't want to say we go we go through the notice of violations and they get one or maybe two visits to the magistrate and like or adopt a three strikes you're out. Like set a set a threshold that if you don't you don't do this in a reasonable time or to avoid a, a future reoccurrence of this sort of thing, injunctive relief. Like that's just the Part of, part of the chain of reaction of things is if this happens and you don't do anything, this happens. If you still don't do anything, this happens. If you still don't do anything, this happens. And ultimately, we, we arrive at that injunctive relief. Well, I'm, I'm yeah, no, no, no. Do it but, now. But it's a policy. Yeah. Even I'm just saying, like, we, should, we should outline that so that it, it, in the future, it's not banded around that somebody gets preferential right. treatment or anything like that. Because like, what happens is it's just dragged on, and, on, on, on. Oh. and then you get grief from everybody that yeah. says, "Yeah, oh, you're not even doing anything." But you can't if the judge isn't going to work with you and enforce the law. And then you got to move on to another judge, up higher up the chain. Yep, because you know, in, in a not in a in a reelection at the time, it's playing. You yeah. got the blame. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, sir. In a, in a non <laughs> in a non zoning matter. You don't have to give them a, a chance to appeal. You can issue the citation or you can file a complaint and then the merits are disputed either before the district justice for fines or the court of common pleas or equitable relief in the form of an injunction. So I just dig in the old so meeting minutes books and give you some more. Should we even count until June? Can we, can we just start this process now? What's that? Well, we can we motion. Can. Yeah, we'd have to. We can have to next workshop. Yeah, let's do it at the workshop meeting. I, I have it's a feeling you'd be able to get that together fairly quick. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's not like we're gonna tread water for a, a long period of time. We authorize them to do it at the workshop and no it's, to the extent it's not resolved yeah. by the middle of June. I'm literally gonna open up meeting so I can't find dates and just have to do that. No, my understanding is historically yeah. in the past 30 years it's been a problem. Oh, oh my god. Well, he, told, he told he told me you could open up any of the old meeting that's in there. He told me that he was, he attempted at one point to build a garage behind his house to house all this junk. So it would be out of sight and that the planning commission or whoever had to hear it zoning address refused it. I said, he never how did it. they refuse it if it's directly in line with your house and, you, and you've met the criteria for your rear yard setback? He he never and he said, well, I don't know, they yeah. just refused it. He, he never, never, he never submitted it. something. But yes, he said that there was never anything. But if he wants to defend himself, if he wanted to make, do that, let's, let's put it in his house. Then make him start, his, make him start paying for the I'm I agree. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to? That's all I have. Thank you very much. Nothing. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 10, 19 p.m. Second. Irene, second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, meeting Jim adjourned. adjourned.